Hey everybody, welcome to this week's live stream. I hope you're all doing good today. So today's going to be kind of fun. We have a poll. I know that I, I kind of put that up a little bit early. Uh, but the, the game plan is the last couple of weeks we've done some uh, experiments, uh, trying a couple of different techniques. And we have four blanks uh, that we, four different styles uh, that we have to choose from. And so we'll show the, the results today. Oh, hold on a minute. I'm like, what is that noise? It's my phone. Hi, how are you doing? Okay, so what was I saying? I was like, what is that noise? Uh, I had my phone on, on the stream so I can see it over at the lathe. Uh, so anyway, the, the four uh, choices are going to be uh, which one do you like the best? Um, so, you know, last week I, I wanted to, to redo the test but do it differently so that we can kind of compare and see what, what, what was the result. Um, there may be a technique that the first experiment might, you know, have produced something really cool. Uh, and the second one, you know, using that same color combination might have, you know, shown something a little bit different. Either way, there was a lot of techniques. And so hopefully we can kind of learn uh, some cool ways to use, uh, you know, different techni techniques with resin. So we'll get to that in one second. We have a couple of things going on. So for today's stream, uh, like the title says, we're going to work on a, a bespoke or kitless or custom or whatever terminology you want to use, uh, the cap for this pen. So I've been working on this one. This is kind of, technically, this is kind of a top secret blank, uh, but, but whatever. Um, it's a, a kind of an experiment that I was doing with some different stuff. Um, so we're gonna work on the cap today. We're gonna drill it out and tap threads and then it'll you know fit on the body basically. And I think that's not gonna take that long. Um, the cap is probably the easiest I, I don't know they're all none of these things are really that hard to do the the drilling and tapping on um, it doesn't take that long um, but we'll probably have time to start turning one of these things up that's where i really slow down with this um if you guys know uh if you, i don't know some of you guys might know that you know when, when i'm doing a kit pen uh, you know one one with a kit um, a lot of times I just wing it. I don't go for dead straight, um, you know, body styles. I just kind of give it a little bit of a, a, like a curvature. And to me, that's easier than, than trying to hit like a straight line or taper or do any of that kind of stuff. Um, so with these, I'm usually trying to get kind of specific dimensions and it takes me a little bit longer to get through the, the actual turning part. Um, so we'll have to kind of see how far we get and, and what goes on. Um, the other thing is I'm, I'm going to kind of, before we begin working on the cap, I just wanted to kind of share, this is not going to be an exhaustive list or, and I, and I don't want to come off like I know what I'm talking about. I'm brand new to this uh, custom pen making stuff. Um, but I just wanted to kind of share some of the tools and things like if anybody's interested in getting into this, just to get an idea of, of some of the stuff you're going to need. Um, I'm planning to do either like a live stream or maybe just a full on video um, kind of going through this stuff. But I want to wait until I've, I've got some experience under my belt and I know what I'm talking about kind of thing. Um, I'm actually going down to Turner's Warehouse on Monday uh, to take a basically a class with Chad. So we're going to do kind of a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I've been kind of working at this stuff. Obviously, I, you know, I kind of know what I'm doing a little bit. I've, I've done a few of these things and I'm, I'm, I'm relatively comfortable with most of the steps. However, there's a lot of things where I know that Chad can help me um, kind of refine some things. I have a lot of questions. Um, so like little things that I can kind of pick apart um, to get the, the best results, basically. So I, I'm really excited about this class. It's going to be a really fun trip. And again, that's why I kind of want to wait until I've uh, you know taken that class. I'll probably learn some stuff from Chad that I can pass on. Um, and also just kind of get a little bit more, uh, you know, get, get a few more pens made before I'm like, oh, here's some stuff. But in the meantime, you guys can kind of follow along, I thought. There's no reason we can't turn the camera on, um, you know, and, and kind of share working on this stuff. I think it's kind of fun. So uh, anyway, that's kind of the game plan for today. So let's see what you guys, who was here first? Uh, I can't, the poll is covering it. It might have been Clyde. I'm not sure who was here first. The, the little poll thing is covering the thing. So anyway, but Clyde's here, Dominic's here, Kim's here, and Mike McEwen. Uh, have have a good time at the celebration. Um, those are kind of like a, a double-edged sword. They're usually pretty pretty cool, but also kind of you know obviously sad. Um, let's see here. Mark's here. 
Nikki's here. What's up? Actually, I gotta I gotta get in contact with you, Nikki. Um, now that I'm doing these things, now I got all kinds of more ideas. Uh, so we'll have to get in contact sometime. See if you have time to to maybe do a couple designs. Uh, and Hugh's here. Nice. Oh, Hugh's gonna watch in the morning. Jim's here. CJ. Gabby's here. What's up? Nice. Uh, Brian and Old Man River. Sweet. The amount of money. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it depends on what, what you do. You don't have to like dump a ton of money into it, but um, there are some, some specialized dish tools that you kind of need. Um, so it's a little bit of money, but you know, you do save on the, the cost of the kits you're making the entire pen out of the blank. Um, and it just kind of depends on, you know, I really love the, uh, it's a different way of, of making a pen compared to a kit. And, and there's the one thing I, I do want to say is it's not like I'm going to stop making kit pens either. The, those things are awesome as well. They're just different. Um, and like right now, my interest is, is kind of heavily into this, the, the kitless um, kind of stuff. So it's pretty fun, pretty fun. Oh, I, I definitely will, Gabby. That's cool. Yeah, it'll be a fun trip. It's going to be kind of a quick turnaround, but anyway. And Tony's here too. What's up, man? And Paul, Christopher, been a replay watcher. You got to, nice. You got your first first live. Sweet. Well, welcome to the stream. And Ken's here. Cool. We got a lot of people. So Zach's talking to himself. <laughs> yeah, I'm always talking to myself. Um, so first thing I want to share actually is this is really cool. So uh, Lou watches the the streams. Uh, I don't know if Lou's ever been in the the live chat. Uh, he might be a lurker or he might just watch the the replays. But Lou contacted me and was like, "Hey, I'd like to send you a, a pen that I make." He's doing the the fountain pens as well, and I was kind of like. I don't, why, I don't deserve a pen, you know, like, I don't know, you know, you should give that to somebody that, that, you know, like a family friend or, or, or try and sell it, you know? And so I kind of was like, no, that's, thank you very much. It was really nice, you know, but I, I just don't feel like I deserve somebody sending me a pen just cause I'm getting into it. And, uh, Lou was <laughs> crafty, let's say, uh, but he wouldn't give up. He wouldn't quit. And he actually, he ordered some stuff on the website and then just sent me a pen and, I was like, I was just blown away. Um, just very humbled. So I wanted to share the pen that he sent. It's really cool. Check this out. So Lou custom made this pen. Look at that. And he sent it to me. I was just like, wow, that, that is so cool. So um, I wanted to, he also, he also wrote, uh, you know, like did kind of like the, like a test kind of thing and wrote a nice note. Um, I just, I, I wanted to thank Lou for, for, sending that out that was so, i mean just such a nice gesture I, I i really still feel like i don't really deserve <laughs> this pen uh, but it, it was really a nice nice gesture and the cool sorry I'm, I'm trying to get something hard to write on um the the cool thing about this is um i'm gonna send lou a pen uh probably wait until i've you know i'm a few more pens into this uh, where I feel a little bit more comfortable, but um, it's kind of cool. Like, the, you know, the, you guys know the pen community is a really awesome community. People kind of sharing stuff and, and helping each other out and, and we can kind of, you know, swap pens and stuff that we make. So he, he sent a, an ink cartridge. I'm, I'm really bummed. I need to order some more uh, of the converters because I actually do have some ink in a bottle too. Uh, but I thought I'd, I'd pop this in and let's write with it. Uh, somebody mentioned, they're like, uh, let's see the pen write. So to do this, all you got to do for these, these little ink cartridges is just pop them into the back and then it's set. Now it's probably going to need to, sometimes you got to kind of shake it down a little bit, let it kind of run down in there. I am, I am extremely new to fountain pens. I also want to mention that I don't really know what I'm doing. So <laughs> just to let you guys know, this may not write right away. Yeah, it takes a, it takes a little bit of dripping um, the ink has to come down into the feed um, so i'm just going to kind of shake it a little bit there we go so i'm going to zoom in I'm, I'm trying to learn as much as i can about fountain pens as well um, i've been uh, like binge watching uh the goulet pens on online and all kinds of different stuff that have to do with uh, i don't know if this is yeah that, that's that's looking good so Ooh, that does write nice. He said at the bottom of his note, he said, this, this pen writes pretty good. It does. Ooh, 
it's smooth. So I don't know, there's some line that every one of these fountain pen people, they're like the quick, quick, is it brown fox or something? Jumps over the dog. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know any of this stuff. I know it's upside down for you guys. Pretty cool. Uh, one of the things, ooh, that's nice. I do that on, on my notes. Um, I have a little kind of squiggly thing. Wow. And they always do this, I, I never knew about this, but there's the upside down test. Oh yeah, that writes really nice. Sweet, I got myself a new pen, guys. Let's, uh, let, me, let me see how, how close up are we. So I just wanted to kind of show you a little bit of a close up. I really like the shape of this thing and it's really comfortable in my hand too. Very awesome, so again, Big thank you to Lou for, for, for being persistent. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, I, I, like I said, uh, when sometimes people are like, oh, I wanna send you this or that. And I'm like, ah, you, you really don't have to do that. So I appreciate all you guys' support. And again, big thank you to Lou for sending this out. I'm gonna be using this. This'll be, uh, I think what I'm gonna do is once I get converters, I'll probably be using this pen uh, to, to sign my, my I, I do a little kind of little note at the end of, uh, or like on the, the packing slips of orders. And so I've been using fountain pens for that. One of the terrible things, I'm gonna put this over here so I don't get it put in resin or something else on my, <laughs> my desk. Um, one of the problems, I'm, I'm gonna have to buy better printer paper because the paper is so terrible that it just, it doesn't look that good <laughs> when you're using these pens. They don't even look good with roller, uh, with uh, like roller balls or ball points really. So let's see here. Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to kind of dive in and, and learn as much as I can about, um, you know, the whole thing about pens. Cause the, and that's one of the reasons why I never really got into fountain pens on the kit side even, because I'm like, I don't know anything about these things. I don't know what they're supposed to feel like or write like. Um, so I'm trying to kind of learn as much as I can about, you know, the whole thing. And um, I'm even gonna, I don't write a lot, honestly. I, I use digital stuff a lot of times, but um, I'm trying to come up with a good way to, to I wanna get some good paper like notebooks and, and, and kind of practice writing and, and kind of get into this uh, a lot more. So it's, it's just, a, it's like a big gigantic fun thing that this, this whole fountain pen world has, has opened up for me. So I'm having a good time with it. The quick brown fox jumps over the dog. Yeah. <laughs> Lazy dog, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, and, and when you really get into this, you guys are talking about nib sizes and, and different stuff. Man, I mean, it, it, it is, if you really get into fountain pens um, and, and like the actual usage of fountain pens, paper is a huge thing. Inks are a huge thing. There's all kinds of different types of inks, obviously colors. Um, the nibs, there's even grinds that they can do, like custom grinds and all this kind of craziness. Uh, so it's, it's a pretty, pretty big uh, world uh, when you kind of jump in. It's pretty fun. Oh yeah, a lot of the, the pen sites. Actually, I, I, got a, I got a sample from Goulet. I, I, and I actually, I, I've also, you know, one of the things, so I, I've told you guys I'm gonna go to the San Francisco Pen Show. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to do is I'm, I'm, I'm actually going there. I wanna buy some makers pens. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that there's certain people that make pens that I know of um, that I've seen on like Instagram and stuff there uh, so I can buy pens and it'd be nice to meet them. So I wanna try and, and buy some different pens from different makers and just see, you know, what's the quality and, and you know, whatever, see it kind of in person and, and own some, uh, especially since you're, I'm getting into this, it's really cool to kind of collect pens from different people. And, you know, Lou has started me out with that. Um, I also wanna get some paper, I wanna see that. I wanna look at different inks. I wanna write with, you know, these different grinds and do all this kind of stuff. And so it's kind of a really fun, fun thing i don't know but one of the things that i also wanted to do was was buy some of the the manufactured pens um and so one uh, i bought a couple of them one of them that i kind of that caught my eye was the um the twisby uh, 580 diamond i think is what the the model number is and i really like that pen it's totally see-through it's a like a plunger 
I forget the name of the thing, but there's no like cartridge. You just fill, it just fills into the like barrel of the pen, basically. It's really kind of a cool different design. And then um, I was also looking at like beginner pens um, and this uh, Lamy Safari um, is kind of one of them. So I picked up one of their, um, uh, what do they call this? It's like a limited edition. They do like different colors every year. So I picked this up and uh, and I wanted to try different nib sizes and all this stuff. You got to kind of, you know, play around with this stuff when you get into it. But um, from Goulet Pens, I bought these, the, the two manufactured ones from Goulet. Um, they, they sent me a coupon to get a, a pack of, I think it's like, what is, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like eight different inks um, for free. So I got some inks to play with. <laughs> So <laughs> I'm having a blast with this. I'm, I'm really, it's just like, it's like a whole new world, you know? So anyway, I've talked a lot. Let's get to these blanks and get the, the um, oh, my, my mouse isn't working. What's wrong with my mouse? Okay, well, that's not working. There we go. Uh, let's get to the blanks and we can get the poll going. Okay, so we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. So here were the two different designs. We did these ones first, and this was where we did dye um, mixed in with the, the color, all right? So we kind of blobbed it together, and I, and I purposefully, purposefully kind of blobbed the blanks. Um, I wanted kind of thicker sections of it. And so, um, and this is number one in the poll. And so you can see there's like, it's tough because it's not, um, I didn't drill this out, but there are areas in this where you can definitely see just the dye. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, you know, it does give an effect. And, and so, especially for your like kitless pens, um, you're gonna, you know, when you, when you drill it out and all that stuff, you're gonna actually kind of see through, you know, certain parts of it. It'll get it, give it a lot of depth. On kit, kit pens, where you got a tube, I would, you're, you're gonna have to, you know, uh, paint back paint, um, like paint the tube or something, possibly even paint the inside of the blank um, for something like this, but we got that one. And then, so that's number one. And then I just did, no, this is number two, I think, yep. So this was the second one, and this was where I poured each of those colors totally separately. I didn't do like the dirty pour. And uh, one one thing, I poured these dip very differently. So, uh, you know, there's a little bit more mixture, but you can definitely see big pockets of, of, of clear. Like this is totally uh, transparent right here. Um, and so there's, because I poured each of those colors separately, you're gonna have bigger pockets of that transparent than, than these even. These were poured where the dye and the mica were poured together before we poured them into the mold. So here is a sample of number two. So let me, let me pick out some spots where, yeah, there's definitely some transparent resin right there where it's just dyed. But, so we got purple, yellow, and green. So that's number one and number two. And then number three was the one from the, the first week where we, again, mixed, we, we mixed up dye, just dye, and then also mica. This, these were interference colors. And so I'm blown away when you mix blue dyed resin in like a, like a dirty pour in with the, the blue interference color. I mean, look at these crazy swirl patterns, even the red. It's like, a, I don't know, it, it, it has a lot of different colors associated with it. So that's number three. Here's one turned back, like a sample. All right, this is number, oh, that's number four. Right. I think I did this wrong. Yeah, that's that one. Oops. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna redo these. <laughs> I, gotta, <laughs> I was saying the wrong thing. Um, I want it to be number one is the, one and three are the, the the first week ones. I don't know. This is getting confusing already, isn't it? Okay, so I just want to re redo the numbering system here. Number three is what I was just talking about. So here's number three. Here's the sample. And so again, because we mix both of those colors together, you can, there's definitely, there's some transparent areas, but it, it's like smaller pockets of the transparent part. You can see it here, the darker blue is the transparent resin 
Um, and then the lighter stuff is the interference powder. So uh, pretty cool, number three. And then number four is that same thing, except we poured the, the colors separately. The, the dyed was separate from the interference. And so we got some pretty interesting results with these too. So that's the outsides. Again, this is number four. And then here's the inside. And again, you're going to get larger pockets. That's a pretty big pocket of, of transparent red right there. And then the lighter ones that are almost pink, that's where you're, you've got the, the interference powder. The interesting thing about this is the because you have like green and blue and red and like all these different kind of darker colors in there, it, it kind of plays a little bit different with the, the interference powder. You get kind of weird... I don't know, weird interactions going on. So it's, it, it was a really interesting test from a lot of perspectives. So those are the four. Um, let's see here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scroll up. My mouse is not working today. Come on, work with me here. Welcome to the fountain pen rabbit hole. I know it's a total rabbit hole. Oh, I don't even want to get into calligraphy. <laughs> no, no, thanks. Hey, I'm not going to get moleskin. I was thinking about getting the Rhodia, I think is what it's called. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch. So again, one, two, three, four. Okay. I don't know if that makes a whole lot of sense, but our layouts um, and you guys can continue doing the poll it's going to be kind of harder for people that join later but you know oh your dad had a jewelry store that's cool wow yeah yeah and that's a whole other uh, rabbit hole when you get into this stuff so you know I'm, I'm coming at this like i want to make my own materials and uh and I mean, realistically, it's not like I really want, my goal is not to become a fountain pen maker, um, like, like as my thing. Um, I want to make materials for people that are doing this. My, you know, uh, some people may or may not know, you know, I, I get asked to do like knife scales, uh, blanks, and, and, and different types of things that I don't make knives. I've never made a knife with, you know, one of my blanks or anything like that with the, you know, for the scales. And although I don't think it's really that difficult and I understand generally how, they, how they're put together, I haven't actually done it. So I don't really sell knife scales <laughs> because I don't know what's, I don't know how to make the material the best that it can be, you know? And so I never really, uh, with kitless pens, it's kind of a different game. And I never, you know, really focused on selling, you know, blanks to the kitless pen community. You could use my blanks, but you'd have to buy two of them and, you know, I just never catered to that because I didn't understand exactly what went into it. And so a lot of the thing with me doing this is to learn how these are made so that I can understand, you know, what would be a really cool blank. So that's a big focus. But now that I've gotten into it, I'm like, I want to get into fountain pens and understand this stuff and, and do this. But it's not going to change what I'm doing. It's just uh, from the making standpoint, I really enjoy this. One of the one of the benefits for me is you know you get to make the entire pen out of my material uh, which i think shows it off so it's just going to be good for like you know instagram posts and uh, pictures on the website of the the blanks and stuff um, and i'm just really enjoying making them so it's kind of like a win-win-win <laughs> type thing shimmer ink yeah oh man okay so let me see here yeah, there's, I don't think I'm going to get into like, I don't know, maybe sometime I might actually drive my stuff and, and like actually do a booth at like San Francisco, maybe LA, um, but I'm not flying my stuff across the country to like DC or anything like that. It just, it's not, I've never, I'm not a show. I like to go to shows and I don't mind like demonstrating, um, and, you know, or, or whatever, hanging out at booths, but um, I'm not really, I don't really... I have no interest in, in doing the show thing for my blanks. Not much, anyway. I like to go and just enjoy, you know. So let's see here. I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I think it's going to be fun going. I'm hoping that, um, I don't know, I'm hoping there's a lot of people uh, that do, are going to San Francisco this year. Um, so are you going to uh, San Fran, Gabby? Will I see you there? I didn't, I don't know if you said that above. All right, so let's, uh, let's see here. I think let's, let's switch camera views. So again, what we're going to do is work on the cap for this, this pen that I, so I've already done the, the body gotten that all drilled out, tapped and threaded, did the section. I was totally running, I, I figured out a problem that I was having um, on my sections. My nib would not fit. I was having issues getting the nib to fit and I realized I was using the wrong drill bit. <laughs> so Sometimes you learn on your own. Uh, but we'll do the cap, but first, like I said, I'm just gonna kind of, I, 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 I assembled a lot of the tools that I, it's not necessarily the tools just for this cap it's just generally the tools that i kind of use for making these so i'll just kind of go through that and again i'm no expert i just got into this um this is just kind of a, a quick list of of what to expect and i did link to turner's warehouse has an entire section of their website devoted to kitless pen making um, they have i'm pretty sure like 98% of all the stuff that I'm using, I got from them. Um, so they're very, they have everything that you need pretty much to get into this. Uh, so it's a pretty awesome thing that they have that. Uh, years ago, I tried to get into this a little bit, um, made one or two pens, and it was just difficult finding like the taps and dies and the, you know, all the things that you need. It was hard. And at this point, you know, Turner's Warehouse has everything and there's even other people, other places for certain uh, types of things um, that supply, um, you know, if you're getting into making custom pens. So let's switch over to this other view here. Um, I think that's it. It's all the talking. Uh, sorry, guys. I, I know I talk a lot, but... <laughs> A lot of information. Okay, so I didn't, did I not switch views? I didn't switch views. Let's switch to this one. How about that? I might need to reposition the camera a little bit here. Yeah. All right, so on the lathe, um, one thing that you're really going to want is a collet chuck. Um, it just, it's really hard using four jaw chucks. They, they don't, it's hard to get it like uh, it's almost impossible probably to get it like concentric running so uh, these collet chucks are great because i might need to switch to a different collet here this yeah i need a different collet um hold on real quick let me swap out i think it's this one so the way this works there's this little kind of spring actuated collet thing on the inside it pops into the the threaded part and if you can get it to thread on and what it's doing is it's applying pressure from every angle rather than just certain points and that's why you get this this is the most concentric that you're going to get so you're, you're going to want to get a collet chuck if you're going to get into this it's just kind of one of those necessity type things and so you just you know twist it on and it's going to run as true as possible um, it's it's the easiest way to for work holding for these blanks of course, you're going to need a, a you know a live center on the other end. You're going to need a drill chuck because um, you're going to be drilling and tapping and doing all this stuff. Um, most of you guys probably these two things most you know pen turners probably have wood turners. That's probably not a big deal. Um, now, when you get into more kind of specialized tools. Um, one tool that's really awesome is, and this is actually made by Jim Hines. This cuts the tenons for you so that you don't have to come in with a tool and do this by hand and keep sneaking up on thousands of inches um, and, and trying to keep everything, you know, perpendicular and all that. This thing mounts into a drill chuck. Let me, let me, let me set it up just to kind of show you. This thing is just amazing. And this actually really, um, this was one of the things that I really hated about doing this on a wood lathe. Um, it was the tenons. It just, it took me forever. So you just mount it in a drill chuck and then, um, you know, just, just wind it in and it, it's going to cut a, a perfect, you know, 10 millimeter or 13 millimeter, whatever you need, um, tenon on this. And they have a full video, um, on the Turner's website, Turner's warehouse website. Um, but the way this works, there's these little um, like bushings. Think of it almost like pen kit bushings. 
and that's going to set the distance the depth of cut and so this one is for a 10 millimeter tenon so you just set that there and there's a cutter here that you you know you use these set screws set it up on this bushing lock it down and then when this thing comes in it's going to cut a 10 millimeter tenon every time so it really saves a lot of messing around um, it, you know and it's not really that expensive but it's it saves a ton of time um, you're going to need lots of different various drill bits um, and so turner's warehouse has most of this stuff you might need to go other places um, you might i might recommend just getting one of those like drill indexes that has a ton of them but you're still probably going to need to get very specific drill bit sizes that may or may not be in a, a drill index one thing that i would recommend you don't need to get uh, a special laminated one um, but you can find these on the internet these are uh, this shows you like all the different um, decimal sizes for different drill bits and uh, that way you can find the the perfect size uh, you know for like tenons or, or you know when you're when you're cutting threads and drilling holes you can find the, the perfect size uh, for the threads that you're making. Um, like I said, you can just download the, uh, a chart like that from a lot of the machine shop places have those. Um, I think Little Machine Shop probably has it. Um, LittleMachineShop.com, but you can probably just find one on if you just Google it. Another thing that you're probably going to want to pick up is a good, reasonably good, it doesn't have to be expensive, but a, a decent set of calipers um, because we're doing fairly fine measurements on things. And this is just an easy way to, to get a, a, you know, a good measurement. And I would recommend getting one that's got the millimeter inch and, and doing a digital. Um, I have another set of these that's just the, the dial for the you know, thousands of inches. And I got to be honest, you got to kind of read a bunch of different things that are going on. And this is great because you can actually measure something in metric and then just convert it to imperial uh, by push of a button. So I, I think that a digital caliper is a good thing to get. And let's see here. Another thing that's going to be imperative are you're going to need when you when it comes time to start turning these things work holding again is going to be an issue and so let me go get the other part of the blank where's where's the rest of the blank there there it is so this is the body and i'm going to stop and, and look at questions if there are any like i said again i am not an expert at this i'm just kind of going through some stuff uh, but for work holding this body's done the next step that i would do on it is to shape it um, but you need some way of, of work holding. Oh, that's pretty tight in there. There we go. Uh, hold on a minute. Let me clean this thing out. Uh, another thing <laughs> that's good to have is like some pipe cleaners, stuff that's not going to mess up your threads. So you can, I need, I sh probably should have just washed this out, but <sighs> I wasn't there yet. Okay, so this little mandrel, let me make sure I'm not cross threading this. Okay. Um, this will hold your blank and support it all the way down in because you got a big hole in there. And so this again, call it Chuck, um, that'll hold this and you can turn it. So uh, Turner's Warehouse has all of these mandrels um, in, I think they're in stock uh, for different sized holes. Uh, you are gonna need, that's one thing I forgot to put out here, taps and dies. All right, so this is a die. It cuts the, the male threads, the outside threads, and then a tap, and this cuts the internal threads. All right, so you're gonna need to get specific sizes for those. Um, triple start threads can get really expensive and you don't necessarily have to get those, um, but they do make the cap body quicker to, turn on, to, to put on and off. Um, but you don't have to spend a bunch of money on that r off the bat. You can just get a single start you know, thread and, and make that connection. It's just you're going to have to turn it more rotations. I don't know if that makes sense or not. But uh, another thing that I, I find invaluable are Sharpies. You're going to have to mark dimensions, you know, depths on your drill bits a lot. Um, another thing that a lot of people may or may not have is a center drill. 
you want to do that when you're drilling out on this material, you know, first to kind of give it like that, to find that center and, and help that drill bit, um, you know, guide it into the middle. So that's something that's imperative. And then another thing that's kind of nice to have, I, I found these, um, Jim was using them at Turner's Warehouse. It's basically a chamfering tool. Um, so when you drill a hole, before you tap threads in it, you can chamfer that edge and make it nice so it's not sharp. Um, so this is pretty cheap little addition to, to the shop. Um, and I've, I think I linked to this specifically. It's something I found on Amazon. Um, I think that's about, well, the only other thing is you need something to, uh, you know, you're going to be drilling and tapping threads. And so you want something to like a lubricant to cool off the material. Um, a simple way to go is just get some mineral oil. That works fine. Some people use cooking sprays. I'd kind of recommend not doing that. This stuff can like go bad and, and stuff. You don't really want that on there. It's sticky. I think mineral oil is probably a better way to go. Uh, you can use WD-40. And if you really want to get crazy, you can also, I decided to go this route because I, I'm thinking about going down the metal lathe uh, route. Um, this is a, a cutting fluid. You can buy this stuff on Amazon or wherever. Um, so it's kind of purpose built for this kind of operation. You don't have to do that though. And then one other tool that is really awesome for doing the tapping and, and, and die cutting is this little tool. I forget exactly who makes it. Turner's Warehouse carries it, but this goes into, so you got a, a little mandrel that goes into the tailstock. Let me get the camera lined up on this because it's a really awesome little doohickey. Let me make sure that this is kind of set up. Okay. So this thing goes in the tailstock. This is a uh, tap holder. So let me find a tap that fits this. And this works for both taps and dies. This holds your tap. And then this goes onto this, this uh, shaft here. And when you're, you're cutting threads on the inside, whether it be the outer diameter, you know, the outer threads or the inner ones, um, this will hold a die as well. You can just swap out this little chuck thing for this on the, on the holder. But then the thing is you can tap threads with this. It moves in and out and, it, and it's lined up perfectly along the, the axis or you know whatever, the, the line. Um, and so it's a really awesome tool. This one is a little bit more expensive and you can get this done without buying this, but it is a really nice tool. If you're serious about getting into this, I would highly recommend it. I think today, most of the makers that, that are doing this stuff have one of these things. So I think that's about all the, for the most part, all the tools that I use. Um, I can't think of anything else. I, like I said, I'll, I'll do a little bit more in depth, you know, kind of, uh, you know, either video or live stream um, down the road. That's a little bit less me just, you know, ran, rambling about a bunch of different tools that I have. Uh, but let me, let me see here. The, uh, let's see here. Do we have any questions? Sorry, I was, I've been talking for a long time today. Oh man. Okay, there's a boom. Gabby might be going to, nice. Couldn't go to LA. Oh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you in San Francisco then. Uh, Xpoxy Designs is asking how much pressure pots cost. It depends on which one you get. They could be from about a hundred bucks to, if you get a really big one, they can be hundreds of dollars. Um, yeah, I have all the different call it sizes. Uh, I think this is actually a, uh, I don't know, it's either a 13 16 or a, a 19 20. Um, just to let people know, I have been making blanks using PVC pipes, and that's what CJ is talking about, to the 19 to 20 millimeter um, call it chuck. Uh, if, if you're, and, and every blank maker is gonna be doing things slightly different, but um, if you're using a PVC pipe, a three quarter inch PVC pipe actually produces a point, it's like a 0.81 or something like that. It's a little bit bigger than three quarter inches. So you're gonna need a slightly larger, either a 13 16 or a 19 20 uh, call it for those. 
and that's what this is um, but i am switching over to um like my gatling molds these are the ones that i sell this is three quarter inch like actual three quarter inch um, and and these guys are going to be a three quarter so you can you can use the three quarter if you're buying materials from people that are you know using these types of molds um, and I, I i made my own i, I made a six blank uh, eight and a half inch um, so all all of my blanks i'm going to be switching over where down the road and i still have inventory of certain blanks that are like the larger diameter but eventually they're all going to be three quarter inch just a, that's just a side note it doesn't have anything to do with this but for people that are buying blanks just be aware that that change is coming i was just waiting to actually make a mold that i can use uh xbox he's asking what lay this is the 2436 laguna Let's see here. I'm I'm just going to quickly try to get through these questions. Oh, a meteor? Wow. That's cool. I didn't hear it. <laughs> There's no meteor in Nevada. Kid Cooper, I'm doing good, man. Floating tap holder. That's a good that's a good name for it. I forget who makes it. Um does it say Oh, it, it's actually I think it says on here somewhere. Neil's niche but like I said Turner's Warehouse has these things and I find it to be it's again I mean you could get away with not using this and it'll be cheaper so like when you first get started you may or may not necessarily need this it's going to be more accurate for sure um, and it's much easier so you know it depends on if you want to spend the money on that same thing goes with um, the you know Jim Hines's tenon cutter you don't need to buy this to you can make tenons by hand it's just it's a lot more tedious and time consuming so to start out do you need one no you know especially if you're not sure you you want to continue with this stuff but i'll tell you what it's so much faster to make tenons with this thing so for me definitely worth the money okay so i think that's about it so we have our cap material and let me where's my blank so I want to mention one other thing, and this again, I'm new to this. Number one, where did my where did the section go? Oh, there it is. Um, I'm new to this stuff, so I I don't know what the best answers are. Some of this is probably just going to be up to you. For me, this whole bl this used to be an entire blank, right? So let me let me go get my example. I just want to kind of explain this so and you can think about it and discuss it see what you guys think but so i started <clears throat> excuse me started with a an eight and a half inch long blank and for me and, and my this may change but my my currently my my take on this it's really hard to line up all of these things you know all three of these parts and actually have it really look like it's you know continuous um, part of the problem is the section is much thinner than the caps going to be and the way that these you know your, your resin materials work you can take off you know you can thin things thin a blank down a little bit further like like take you know a few more thousands off and the patterning is like totally different so for me I don't try to line up the section with the body, um, you know, like as far as like the pattern goes of the blank. I just focus on the cap and the body. So I'm going to take out of this blank, and, and again, this may change, but this is what I'm currently doing. I take the body here and then the cap, you know, the cap here. So those are kind of continuous and they're about the same diameter. They're, they're closer, I would say, than the cap diameter in the section for sure so i try to line those up and then i'll take the section out of the end i don't know how i feel about that that's currently how i'm doing it i may totally 180 on that um, another way to get around it if you don't want to have to worry about trying to line up patterning and, and get things to look right is to just go with like a black or maybe even like an accent color um, for your section so it's not even trying to line up that's a kind of an easy way around that but just to let you know, that's, that's kind of how I've been kind of doing it. 
Um, so my cap and my body are lining up, so I want to make sure that this is the side that would mate up with the body like this and keep the pattern rolling. So I'm going to put that guy into my into my chuck, into my collet. <clears throat> Wall Town Pins, what's up? Uh, what does that say? It's all you've made for, yeah. I know, it is a rabbit hole. <laughs> it's crazy. Making you a new pen? I don't know, we're working on something here. We're working on something, we'll see. It depends on if I get through it and it looks okay. All right, so the first step that I'm gonna do is actually face off this material. It's kind of rough and, and not particularly flat. So let's, let me, let me make sure that I got the camera in a reasonable angle. I think we can get closer, possibly. Kind of get in. I think I'm just going to leave the camera at this angle. It's probably going to be the best. I'm going to flip that so I can see what's going on. I'm going to look on my screen over here on the, t the my computer. I think that should be pretty good. Should be pretty good. All right. Now don't laugh at me. My lack of turning skills is probably going to shine through t <laughs> today. I'm a lot. I'm a lot quicker in. In I don't really have to think about doing the kit pens. Some of this other stuff. Some of these operations I don't really do a whole lot of. Especially if if we start turning one of these blanks, it'll kind of depend on what the time is when we get done with this. If we have time to work on it or not. Another thing about collet chucks is sometimes, you know, this thing's kind of bobbing around a little bit. It's kind of off balance. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of fussing, or, uh, fussing about to get it to run a little bit better. Maybe even, even you know, moving where, where it's actually gripping. Sometimes you can't do anything about it. That's even worse, I think. But sometimes you can you can significantly uh you know decrease the amount of wobble not working too well today though that's not that's not too bad so just be aware of that sometimes playing around with the call it can kind of how things are mounted can kind of fix, get things running a little bit truer. And so the cool thing is you can do all of this stuff on a wood lathe. Um, you, don't, you don't need any special you know, metal lathe or anything like that. However, you can use a metal lathe to do a lot of the, a lot of the work on it and it will increase the accuracy uh, of some of the steps and in some cases it may be a little bit more efficient to use a metal lathe I don't really know a whole lot about that at all um, in fact I, I really don't I've never even seen a, one of these pens made on a, on a metal lathe I know how it generally works um, Chad's gonna kind of show me a, a little bit of that just so I kind of have an understanding um, but just know, you know, you can use metal lathes to do some of this stuff and But you don't need one um, and you don't need a big gigantic lathe In fact, I want to mention one thing. I got to be honest guys I'm actually thinking about buying a smaller, uh, you know, like a midi lathe um, Because the tailstock is a pain to be moving around and doing all this stuff Like I would actually say that a mini lathe, you know, like the the smaller lathes work better for this kind of operation um so I'm, I'm debating i may actually i may actually get a different lathe just to do this kind of stuff on um one of the things uh, you know like i said i mean and i'm nitpicking things here but i don't have to get a smaller lathe but there's a lot of i'm scooting back a little bit just to kind of show you when, when you'll see this when we drill you know i'm going to drill in here and then I'm gonna be pushing this tailstock back. Well, this, if your bed gets a little bit sticky, this thing is heavy, you know, and it's just like a pain moving it back and forth. Like, so little things like that, you know, if you have a midi lathe or a mini, 
um, don't feel like you need to get some special lathe. It's going to probably work better um, for a lot of this thing, or at least a little bit more efficient in some cases, which is kind of nice, you know? Okay, so now I need to get my center drill out. And like I said, again, what this does is it just, it's a very rigid drill bit um, that has a 60 degree cone on it, and it's just gonna poke out the middle, and that way when I actually put a drill bit in here, it'll help line it up and get it centered. All right, and there's probably some other things that I'm missing that this center drill actually does, but it's just to help get things kind of rolling on the right foot. Check your speeds. You only need to go about, depends on the size of the, the center drill bit, you know, like halfway up the cone is all you really need. Uh, and a lot of these operations, you know, we're dealing with plastic. So some of this stuff, you don't, it doesn't matter as much. If you're actually doing metal stuff, some of the way that I'm using this, there may be better uh, or more correct ways of doing it if you're actually working with metal. I don't know though, I'm not a machinist. Yeah, I don't really want to use the Nova. Um, it's not particularly like the, the tailstock on that thing. That's going to be worse because it's kind of loose. Um, there's, I want to get, I, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm thinking about it. Um, but I want to get one that's, that's got really tight tolerances and good machining. Like the, the Laguna uh, 1216, I think it is. I'm, that would be one that I would think might be pretty good for this. The Jet 1221 or whatever it is like those ones or the Rikon, like the flagship MIDI is what I would be thinking about. Something that's fairly well made, you know? I don't know though. I'm, I'm actually, that's a question I have for Chad. Mama J's pants, what's up? How are you doing? Oh, Jen's here too. What's up? Yeah. I just know my Nova <laughs> and I don't want to use it. Um, I'm not saying the Nova is not a good one to use. Um, it had been a good lathe for, for many years, but at this point, it's not the lathe that I would want to use. This, that would be going down, down a step. All right, so the next, so again, so just to let you guys know, for anybody, I, I should have mentioned some of this stuff. So um, what I'm making here is, let me flip my, thing so I know that I'm actually showing you guys. The threads on this are a 13 millimeter. All right, so uh, M13. Uh, so I'm gonna be cutting a, a 13 millimeter, uh, you know, tapping threads for 13 millimeter on that. And it's a triple start thread for the cap and body. And then what I use for my, my sections, the, the nib is gonna have, every nib man, manufacturer is gonna have their own specific thread pitch. So you have to get a specific tap for whatever uh, nibs you're using. Um, I would say that as far as I know, the, the two most common that, that most of us makers, uh, you know, the, the people that are doing this kind of hobbyists as, as well as just, you know, makers of pens, not big companies <laughs> kind of thing, um, are using the, the Yovo nibs. So, it, and it's spelled J-O-W-O -O, or Bach. Okay, and each one of those is gonna have a different thread pitch. I'm using Yovos, it's just whatever. It does, I don't think it matters which way you go. Yovos are a good way to go, a lot of people use them. And then for my connection between the, the body and the section, I'm using an M10 by one thread pitch. Uh, so again, I, so I cut that M10 by one on the inside and that's what the, the connection is on the back of my section. Realistically, you can use whatever you want. Um, none of these things really matter. Um, I just, I had M10 by one uh, taps and dies. So that's what I'm using for that. And then I actually have a, a, a 12 millimeter, a 13 millimeter and a 14 millimeter um, for like the, the cap threads. And I've tried a few different ones. The thing that's gonna happen is, let's see, do I have a 13? What did I make a 13 of? I'm sorry. I take it back. 
these are, uh, I'm sorry, these are 14 millimeter threads that are on this one. Um, I think this is a 12 and it's hard, it's gonna be really difficult to show anything on, on, on this uh, camera. Um, but I find that the 12, unless you're gonna put a gigantic shoulder, it depends on the size of pen you're making and, and what the dimensions and all these things are. I don't really like the 12. I think that's really too small for me. I've tried a 13 and it's okay. Frankly, I kind of like the larger pens. So 14 is probably gonna be um, what I typically make. Personally, at least right now, you know, like I said, things are probably gonna change. I just got started with this stuff. But I just wanted to mention that we're gonna be um, tapping 14 millimeter threads. I, sorry about that, it wasn't 13. And uh, the first drill bit that we're gonna use is, what is this one, the 20, I can't even read that. I'm getting old guys, I can't read anything. I gotta pull out special glasses just to read drill bits. It's ridiculous, 25 64 uh, One other thing that I'm gonna, also, I have cheat sheet, <laughs> okay? There's a lot of steps. This is the easiest set of steps. The cap is like a pretty simple thing. I could have, you know, just put my drill bits that I use in a, in a box and I wouldn't need to use this necessarily. However, when you get started, I highly recommend, you know, having cheat sheets. Um, and this is something that I plan to make. I don't have any yet because I'm kind of refining things. And the, the specific sizes of drill bits and all these things are gonna kind of a lot of times depend on what threads you're you know cutting and all that. But I do plan to make some uh, that you can download once I'm pretty well set and, and confident in my steps, you know. I'll be sharing that down the road for anybody that wants to uh, get into it. But there, th I think you can find those things online. I think other people like probably some of the Facebook groups. There's probably a fountain pen making Facebook group that you can, they, I guarantee they probably have one that you can use and download. Okay, so let's get in here, get this thing set up. Okay. Let me stop and see. This is hard to do. Uh, okay, there wasn't that many. You have a jet? Yeah. The jets are really nice. Um, I kind of wish I would have just bought a jet midi first off when I, I liked my Comet, but for a little bit more money, the jet, is it a 1220, 1221, 12, whatever. Um, that's a really nice lathe. I, the, they didn't have Lagunas when I started, but the Jet, uh, the Laguna, is it 1216? Whatever their MIDI lathe is, that is a really nice lathe too. All right, so we're gonna drill. Let me just check my cheat sheet because I'm talking and thinking and center drill, drill 2564. So I'm gonna drill this. Now, when you're doing this first thing, what we're making space for is this stuff, the section and the nib. So you always want to make sure that this first drill that you're doing on the cap is going to clear your section and nib. All right. So I'm going to drill about a two and a quarter or so. I've, I've marked my drill bit already. Um, but that will clear the nib. You, what, if you don't drill it deep enough, then when you cap your pen, you're going to mess up your nib, <laughs> which you don't want. And it's probably going to leak all over the place and there's going to be problems. So just that's the one thing you got to make sure that this first step is going to clear your, your uh, nib and section completely. And I like to put something down to uh, make sure that I'm not getting junk all over my uh, my lathe bed. I'm gonna put a little bit of that, that tapping fluid. You can, like I said, use mineral oil. WD-40 works fine. And then we're gonna drill out to my mark that I got right there. And it should be pretty good. Now, again, I'm a very much a newbie at this. And so I recommend if you are serious about getting into this, um, you know, I'm the type of person that might watch somebody like me explain some stuff and then maybe, you know, give it a shot, like pick up some of the, the tooling that I need, give it a shot and see what's going on. And this is kind of how I've 
how I'm doing it. I told you I'm going down to Turner's Warehouse on Monday um, to take a class with Chad to learn more. Um, however, either way, um, I highly recommend finding somebody that I got to pop my pop my chuck out. Uh, finding somebody that knows what they're doing um, and take a class with them. You know, like really actually learn what what you need to know. Because <laughs> I'm not an expert and I'm, you know, I'm just sharing some of the knowledge that I have acquired so far. Uh, one thing that I want to get is a little spray bottle for this stuff instead of having to paint it on. Um, I think it'll go a little bit easier. Now, the big thing is you don't want to overheat your blank material, and that's why we're using this um, you know, liquid to cool things down, keep everything running nice and smooth um, because we're going to be tapping threads this isn't the drill bit that i'm you know like the the actual one that's going to be used for the tapping portion but you still don't want to overheat the blank because it can what ends up happening is if you really overheat these resins and uh you know a lot of times not not a lot of times um every once in a while i get somebody says oh you're you know the blank shattered on me from one of my pen blanks and if that's the case, I've I've turned thousands of my blanks and I have never had one shatter on me, all right? So most likely they overheated it when they were drilling and it causes it to become brittle. So that's why we wanna use a little bit of coolant when we're doing our drilling functions uh, because it can change the state, the properties of that resin and you know it may not tap as well uh, all kinds of problems can happen i mean it can shatter your blank number one once you start turning it also all right that was fun yeah uh metal metal lathes work really well for this obviously this is what metal lathes were intended to do it's just most people you know really aren't going to want to also buy a metal like if you're already a you know turning pens a, a lot of times the way this works is i don't want to drop that in there um somebody's already been doing the kit pens or they're they're already a wood turner with a wood turning lathe and so um you know the, the next progression is you can make these things on a wood lathe no problem it's fine um even if you have slop in the tailstock, there's ways to get around it. Um, generally, you just need to know where the faults are, and you can usually overcome any fault, even on like kind of a, uh, you know, I could use my comment, no problem. It's just, it's a matter of, it would be taking a step back from this one for sure. Um, but yeah, if you're, you're, but if you already have a metal lathe or, or you know, you're just, you just want to make pens, that's not a bad thing to do. But the problem is, it's hard to shape these pens on a metal lathe. So you might need to get a, a woodworking lathe also anyway, you know, so there's, there's arguments, lots of, lots of people that make these as like their business, they've got a metal lathe, right? Um, I'm, I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't. It's just a lot of people don't want to buy two different lathes uh, and you can do all the, everything on a wood lathe. All right, so this is a 33 60 fourths. Where's my cheat sheet? 30, yeah, 33 60 fourths. That's the bit that I'm going to be using prior to doing the tapping. All right, that's for a 14 millimeter thread. That's what I'm using. Um, and you can, there's, there's some slop. I mean, there's, there's lots of, some people may not realize there's actually a bunch of different, you know, there's imperial and metric. So, you know, our, our fraction bits, imperial, and then metric. But then there's also two other drill, uh, um, what, what do you even call it? Um, drill types, all right? So this is a letter drill type, which is a different 
system than your fractional imperial, you know, and, and metric. And then there's also another one which are numbered. So like literally one through, I don't know what the highest number is, but one through something. And those are called wire gauge bits. All right, so there's lots of different options and that's why I was saying uh, that it's, it would, I think one of the first things that you should do is get one of these charts that shows you. So this number 52, let me see if I'm even on camera here. Uh, so we got, you know, 1 16th, we have 16 or 1.6 millimeter, 52, that's a, a wire gauge. And then you've got, let's see, are the letters on here somewhere? Yeah, the letters are over here. Um, and this gives you the, the decimal equivalent to all these different things, right? So if you're trying to really sneak up on and get like a perfect dimension, um, you may need to just go out and buy, I don't know, you're trying to drill some specific size hole that the X drill bit would be perfect for. And you can buy all of these things individually from different places, um, from, you know, certain suppliers have where you don't have to buy an entire set. You just buy whatever you need, you know, one, one dr uh, drill bit at a time. So that's kind of nice. It saves you from spending a ton of money on drill bits. Um, the coolant that I'm using, I actually got this from Chad. This is what Chad's using also. Um, it was on Amazon. I, I, I don't know, <laughs> metal working fluids, <laughs> trim SC. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go get a, I'm going to, I'm going to go get the link. It's working good. Um, and I'm, my dad has a, oh, they'll send you one for free. Nice. Okay, cool. Uh, my dad has a metal lathe that I think I can requisition for my own use, or at least for both of our uses. Um, so that's another reason why I decided to just get cutting fluid because I'm planning to make my own mandrels and different stuff. Um, someday I'd like to kind of learn how to, to use a metal lathe and, and obviously to, to possibly do some of the operations on these pens. So I was like, well, just give me some, what, what cutting fluid do you recommend? So he just uh, hooked me up with that. So let me get you a link real quick and I'll drop that and I'll put a link in the description as well later on. I don't want to mess up the stream right now. If anybody wants to look at that, that's what I'm using. Yeah, there's a good podcast. I'm actually going to drop. I've, I've been meaning. I, I'm actually a member of the as the turn as the pen turns podcast. Um, it's a really good podcast. If you are if you are thinking about getting into this, I highly recommend listening to this and start from the beginning i'm on like episode 30 right now i've learned a ton of stuff from them too um, and it's jonathan brooks uh jason from uh, jason neal penworks and brad from mythic pen company uh, and you can just get it on you know any podcast you know player thing uh you know i the itunes pot you know whatever um google play any of those types of things. Uh, so I, who did I say? So it's uh, Jonathan Brooks. He's, he's, and for anybody that doesn't know him, he's a blank maker, probably. Uh, that guy might be the most well-known blank maker on the planet. He's making blanks for like Visconti. So <laughs> he knows a couple things about pen blank making. Um, <clears throat> But most of his stuff is really focused on the, the fountain pen world. And so, you know, you may not know necessarily of his work just because if you're if you haven't been doing that, um, you may not have been exposed to it. Uh, but he's so you got a blank maker and then two pen makers. Uh, and, and for anybody that wants to uh, wants uh, some more, is this thing locked in? No. This is the problem with doing a talking and <laughs> getting links is my drill bit locked into the thing i don't know um if you want more pen you know kitless pen making uh action uh jason 
and like I said, uh, Jason Neal Penworks. So on Instagram, he does live streams as well, making the whole thing. And he's been doing this for like six years. So it's not going to be a, as messed up as me trying to do this <laughs> right now. All right. So again, 3364. So this is going to be the final drill bit size to, dr to, to tap the threads for our cap and body uh, mating, uh, whatever. And, and when this is something that I actually got from Jim Hines on his demonstration, if you guys missed it on the, the Turner's TV YouTube channel, he, he kind of did a whole kitless pen making thing. Um, and, and I would agree with this, but it was a good um, explanation as to, you know, I'm doing successive drill, you know, drill bits here. And so when you're, when you're approaching that hole, you want to kind of ease in at first and let the let the threads let it kind of center itself a little bit. There is some play, you know. No, I don't care which lathe you have. There's going to be some play, and you want to just kind of let it find that center, you know. So ease in, and then you can kind of start, you know, cranking up the revolutions. Uh, you know, the, the so I'm just going to kind of ease it in, let it kind of find that center, and then once it really engages with the material. Then you can just start cutting. It's going to sound like it's going to explode, but it probably won't. It might. Probably won't, though. I probably went a little too far on that one, but that's okay. And I got my line right here. Already got that ready. One issue I have, so it makes it a lot easier. You can leave the thing running and then just push your, you know, keep your tailstock loose, wind, wind your threading out, and then push it back in. My problem is this tailstock is so, this is the problem that I'm having, is the tailstock's so heavy that it's kind of in, unless my bed is like, you know, recently waxed, it's kind of jerky pushing it back in. And so technically you can, you know, just leave it running, you know, wind, back out your, your, your quill. Uh, and then push it right back in just just about to where you know it's going to hit one other issue i have on this lathe and, and and it's a reason why i don't do that and just thought you know push it in while it's running is my my hand wheel on my tailstock has there's a there's a an allen screw right here and sometimes, well, that, that thing constantly loosens up. I, I should probably put some Loctite in there. Um, but it's con it, when it loosens up, what ends up happening is my quill has play. <laughs> and so if I shove this in and accidentally, you know, push it all the way into the material, it starts self-feeding, which is not good. So um, I don't know. There, there's been some weird things. So I always just shut the lathe off and then push it back up, which makes it a little bit harder to do. But... Um, there's a couple reasons for me doing that. <clears throat> All right. Feels like there's there's junk kind of piling up in there. Okay. Like I said, pretty much a newbie at this. Oh, that's far enough. I don't think I, I didn't put any liquid on there, I don't think. Just, you like to get it nice and, nice and sloppy. All right. Where's my line? There we go. Get all of our shavings off of there. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, it should be on. I think it's on any of those, um, any you know, podcast pl uh, platform things. I think they're on all of them. I I use the the iTunes one, so I know it's there for sure. 
and you don't have to be all crazy like I am uh, 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 OCD about cleaning off all your <laughs> bits and stuff I just like to clean them off keep everything nice all right so I'm kind of blow that off now this is where that little chamfering tool that I, I, I told you about comes in um, this is a pretty sharp um, edge right here and the next operation that we're going to do is tapping threads so what this little chamfer tool does is actually twofold you know it's a little harder to start on a on a sharp shoulder like that not it, it's much better to chamfer that edge a little bit so, to kind of guide your tap in but the other thing that it does is it just doesn't leave it gets rid of that sharp shoulder so that when your pen's finished it's not going to have that sharp shoulder so it does two two things um by by you know just chamfering and it's such a neat little little doohickey i love this thing i'm gonna get i'm gonna get a good close-up shot i love this tool I saw, uh, the first time I saw this was uh, at Turner's Warehouse when Jim was doing his, his demonstration. And you just come in, might, oh, I might be too close to kind of see what I'm doing with my hand. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. I love this little thing. It can be really handy for a lot of different things too. Okay. <clears throat> Where's my camera crew? There we go. So all you do is you just screw it in and you see there's you know just takes off a, a, a very fine little shaving there but it's nice and uh, there's you know there's no sharp edge now such a simple tool and they're pretty cheap they're like 15 bucks or something like that there's there's a there's a plastic version um, which I, I actually bought that too there's a plastic version that might be a little bit cheaper than this one. I gotta be honest, I would recommend getting the metal one. It's gonna last longer and it's like maybe $5 more, something like that, but it's the same exact tool. I can just see me dropping that <laughs> plastic one and it falls apart, you know. I lost my, there it is. Okay. Oh. We are putting the tap on. We're tapping threads now. It's time to tap threads, guys. All right, so now we're going to convert the lathe to tapping mode. And this is where that, that nifty tool from Neil's Niche comes in. I zoomed out. There we go. You can see me setting it up. It's all simple stuff. Nothing, nothing super tricky about any of this. But the one thing that I will mention is, you know, there's, there's a lot of steps and there's like a bunch of conversions of things that have to happen. So it, it, it's a little bit slower going, like in general, than, you know, just turning kit pens because you're constantly kind of like, you know, shaping the, or, you know, cutting this thing and drilling and sw swapping out drill bits and doing a lot. There's just a lot of like little, little steps, little actions going on. Um, that you need to know. Where's the... There it is. Okay, so like I said, actually it's a tap thing. And I think I need the big one. Uh, and this, this tool comes with a bunch of different sizes of things. Taps come in a range of different sizes. Like my M1 for the section the M1 taps are, are smaller and fit in this size, uh, you know, little whatever thing. Where did my... You can see the difference. I mean, it's a significantly different size uh, shank. So I got to swap out and use the larger size. Yeah, I don't know. And I don't have experience with this, but I've kind of heard that turning on a metal lathe is not particularly awesome. 
Um, so I, I don't know though. That's the thing is, you know, this machine is set up for doing that kind of freehand, you know, work, whereas a metal lathe is set up to do these types of actions, like, you know, where you're, you're doing very specific, like parallel or perpendicular straight line, you know, so that's the thing is each of the machines, and that's why a lot of the people that are making these pens, they have both because the metal lathe is made for machining. The wood lathe is made for, you know, shaping uh, more by hand. Um, and so there's advantages and disadvantages to both. You can use one or the other probably for anything, but just kind of depends. And you could even set up, I was talking to my dad about it. Like you can, if all you're doing is putting like a taper when you're shaping your caps and stuff, you can set up a metal lathe to just do the work for you, you know, where it's just cutting, but you, it's going to be a particular setup um, that you're going to have to also do on that and probably and he was saying like you have to buy like a taper jig and there's there's more involved than just picking up some carbide tools all right so i think we're ready to rock here you got that thing we got that we need our cutting fluid don't forget the cutting fluid stuff going One little trick that Jim showed me um, is to pop your, your, your tap in and then rotate it and just make sure that it's not doing, you know, everything's running concentric, basically. Um, that'll just kind of, it's like a, a good double check to just make sure that you've, get everything's set up properly kind of thing. And then once you're ready, and for anybody that doesn't know, when you're when you're tapping, and it, it there are some different types of taps that 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 can work differently. This type of tap is actually pushing the chips in, so you need you go in a little bit, and then you actually back it off to break the chips off. So you know maybe like three three in, one back. And that's probably plenty. I don't really need to go too deep. There are some different types of taps also. Um, and this is something that I definitely do know about. Um, let's see if I can give you an example, I think. Yeah, this is a good example. So there's three types of taps out there. And, the, and it all has to do with like the first little bit of the, the tap threads. So this one is a starter tap. And you might, I don't know if this is really showing you, but the, the threads, it, they're not full threads at the beginning. And it's just, it's, it's kind of tapered. Might be called a tapered tap, I don't know. Um, but you'd use this as like the starter. This is more for like, you know, doing metal stuff. You don't really need to use this for plastics, but it's tapered. And so the thing is you're not getting full threads for like a quarter inch on this, this tap, not until you get to the full diameter. Uh, you know, so you're going to have to go in further to get to full threads. Then there's an intermediate tap. Uh, I got to look at this. The one in the middle is like an intermediate. And so it's just got a little bit less of that taper until you get to the full threads. And then you have what's called a plug tap or a bottom tap. And it's pretty close. Now this is, I don't even know if this is actually even a true bottoming tap, but there's much less taper down there. So just to let you know, there's, there are some different taps. Um, my preference for doing this type of stuff, I mean, really, for the most part, I think you could probably get away with just using bottoming taps for probably just about everything. Um, you know, we're using a, a super soft material to tap threads into. Um, and you don't have to go as deep that way. All right, so now the question is, how did we do? 
back this off, kind of clean up some of this fluid. Um, one thing that I don't really know, I don't think it really matters, but I'm, I'm going to be asking Chad for an efficient way of doing this. But um, before you want to use this pen, you want to clean out all this stuff. So I don't care if you're using mineral oil, WD-40, cutting fluid, none of it you want in your pen um, when you're done, right? Um, so you really want to clean this out. I don't know at what stage is best to do that. I mean, there's like, I'm just trying to kind of figure out the steps and I don't really care about the finished product right now. I'm not selling any of these that I make. Um, but just to let you know, there's um, a little bit of cleanup involved um, before it's like ready. Because the problem is if you got like oils and stuff in there and it mixes with the, the ink somehow, uh, it's not going to be good. And plus it could get sticky if you don't clean out that mineral oil or, you know, cooking oil. So just to let you know, I'm going to get this tap out of the way. And what we're going to do is we're going to put our body on. And then I'm going to get you guys in close. We're going to see if this, how, how good did I do? How concentric is this blank running? And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, in most cases, it's probably not going to be like absolutely perfect. But if it's like flopping around, then you did something wrong. Not too bad. It's got a little bit of a bend. It's got a little bit of a bounce to it. But it fits in there nicely. It's looking good. Now, one, one other thing that I don't do that you could do is actually face, you know, like turn the blank concentric before you start doing all this stuff and and it's not going to be wobbling and doing anything like that that's something that i i don't know what the theory is on that it it seems i don't think it's necessary probably but you know it is something that you could do now the other thing is and this is what can really get to be like time consuming i'm just slightly off this doesn't line up perfectly. This would be perfect right here. You can kind of see, I don't know if you can see this or not. Let me let me get the camera behind like in front of me real quick. I'm gonna have to unplug it. <clears throat> that way I can see the through the viewfinder thing and make sure that you guys can actually see what I'm talking about. This has to do with the grain pat, the patterning. It's not really grain on a resin blank. The patterning lining up. I'm gonna turn down my light. I forgot to do that. It's a little bit bright. All right, so this is lined up. Like right, these lines should line up right here. All right, and the problem is they don't line up right now. So the cure or how you deal with that is you would actually, let's see here, you would actually take down some of the material off of this cap. Is that right? Yeah. So let's do that. Let's see if we can get this to line up. My, the only problem is I have a feeling we're gonna be going the wrong way. Like I take some off. I, I'm not, I don't know exactly what I'm doing entirely with all this stuff yet, but I have a feeling that if I take some off, it's going to be rotating the opposite direction, so I might have to take off quite a bit. But we're going to do that because I want to. I want this thing to to line up and look as good as it possibly can. So <clears throat> let's nibble away. And, and th this is the thing also where you know we we're talking about the metal lathe and all that. Like <sighs> things like this might be easier. To, I don't know. Uh, I haven't. Like I said, I haven't seen somebody make. A pen on a metal lathe but trying to flip-flop back and forth between cutting and drilling and doing all that might be a little easier on a on a wood lathe I don't know so I'm just gonna try to take down a little bit of this material and that's gonna what that's doing is it's gonna change where the threads start which is going to mean that it's going to line, you know, change where when I when I thread this on where it stops. 
The problem is this is a triple start tap, triple start thread. So I got to figure out which one is the, oh, it is working. It's the right way. Okay. So just a little bit more. Nice. So I just have to take a little bit off. Now you might get lucky with a triple start thread and one of the positions just kind of lines up. Um, I've actually had that on a couple of them. They just kind of magically lined up and I didn't have to do anything. Uh, but I think in most cases, that's not gonna be how it works. You're gonna have to do a little bit of work to get things rolling. A little bit more. Let's see if you guys are... Yeah, they only, they only line up. And actually, uh, Jonathan Brooks was saying that he uses double start, which I'm kind of curious. I, I don't know of anybody that actually carries those, where to get one. Um, what he was saying was years ago on like... I don't know, in some in some like online group or something, um, they, they did like a group buy so that the manufacturer would actually make a, you know, a batch. Um, I don't know how, how available those are ever gonna be. I'd, I'd like to try one and see. So I, I think his pens all use that. So uh, that might be a kind of a nice happy medium where you're not like trying to flip it three, three different times to get your cap to line up. Uh, and some people, like on that podcast, Brad was saying that he just doesn't even use triple starts, I guess. But I gotta be honest, I can't stand sitting, screwing on a cap. Like it, that's not worth it for me. <laughs> It's just, it's a pain. I don't, I don't like that. Ooh, we're getting close. I don't know if you can see that, but I highly recommend just nibbling away like I'm doing right now. You don't want to take too much off and then have to go all the way around again. There we go. That ought to be pretty close, I think. Ooh, so close. So, uh, how many of you guys have um, done a demonstrator where it's totally transparent or pretty see-through? And how much fun did you have um, sanding the inside of that thing? I like totally want to make one. I have no, no desire to sand it though. Ah, we're getting so close. This is the right thing, right? Yeah. Where does it have to be right there? Oh. Like, maybe, just a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely bread. I don't understand that. I, I just, eh, I think, man, something's wrong with the threads on this cap. Well, that's not cool. I don't know what happened, but I'm missing threads somehow. Huh. Maybe we'll just cut those off the end. Hmm. Oh, for goodness sakes. Okay, it's got to be one of these. There we go. There it is. That's, I think, lined up. Let me take my glasses off. Let me get this light. Problem is the blank's reflecting. Yeah, that's that's lined up. All right. Let me get you guys in here, show you the lineup.
if I can. Hard finding the right light. But I got this little green lines lining up, and we got kind of a line down there, and then the blue. That's pretty much that's locked in. What time is it? Three forty-five. All right. Now, like I was saying, unfortunately, I don't know what the deal is, but my threads are like missing on the cap. So, I don't know. I don't like that. I don't know what, I really don't know what happened. I got worn off somehow. Well, I'm not selling these things anyway, so that's okay. All right, so this cap is all done. <laughs> um, real quick, though, I'm what I'm going to do, I took some material off. I'm frankly not worried about this, but I did take some of the material off, and I just want to double check and make sure that I'm not going to have an issue with my cap. Um, you know, damaging my, my nib for some reason. What's going on here? Put this thing together. How about that? Oh, I guess I can't, but... Okay, I'm okay. What I'm going to do is measure it. So I know that I need to be about two and a quarter or so. Let me just double check this. Ah, uh, yeah. You need to measure from the base of the blank. So two, two and a quarter ought to be plenty. So I just want to double check and make sure that I've got clearance in here. So for anybody that doesn't know, this thing will tell you depth. And we're at 2.33, so we're definitely not going to smack the nib. So we can call that a day. So now the next thing is threads might be in the cap. I don't know. I don't think they're in the cap. I don't know what happened. I don't know. These things happen, though. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do here, I think. Oh, that's tight. Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to re... I'm going to chase the threads on this body because I'm having a tough time getting the um, I'm having a tough time getting the mandrel to, to seat fully. So I'm just going to kind of double check and make sure my threads are decent all the way through. Not a bad idea to grab a, a tap handle as well. I mean, I could chuck this all back up, but it's just as easy just to grab a tap handle and... So, there we go. Just so I can have a little bit of force on my threads here. Just make sure you're not cross-threading. Make sure that the threads are lining up. I just want to kind of chase this real quick and make sure that the, the threads are all clear and they're working well. 
a lot of times that's that's really all you need to do now this is probably the point where you would want to clean it out you know we're not going to do that though there we go yeah i find that if you just tra chase the threads a lot of times it kind of fix fixes crazy yeah Yeah, reamers, that, and when you really get into this, there's different ways of doing this um, that can really, what am I doing? We need to call it, um, that can make things a little bit easier. Um, there's there's different tools and stuff, reamers and all that stuff. I, I've never used a reamer before, so I don't know anything about how, you know, never experienced it, let's say. All right, so, and you're going to want to get a, like a, probably, you want to get like a full set of these collets because you're going to be doing different stuff and it just gives you the opportunity. But this thing's a 5 8 uh, and realistically, this is actually metric, um, but I don't have the whatever metric size that would be. I don't really feel like buying one. Um, but it just makes it a lot easier to be able to grab, you know, whatever size. Uh, you, you need, you know, having a set of them. And the, the collets aren't really that expensive. The chuck can be a little bit more, you know, chuck can cost a little bit, but the actual collets themselves aren't particularly that expensive. That's running all right. This blank was seemed like it was a little bit kind of wobbly anyway. <laughs> no, thanks, man. Well, wait till we get, actually get this thing cut down because the outside of these blanks uh, doesn't even show what what it looks like. Oh, you know, well, okay. So I might talk to Chad about that because I have noticed, well, no, actually this one, this isn't one of the, this one I bought a long time ago, the, the 14. So it, it's not the die because that it didn't come from that batch. Um, I bought it many years ago. I started out with a, I decided to buy a 12 and a 14 um, when I first got into this. Um, cause I think partly because that's, I think that was maybe all that was available, honestly. So I was like, well, I don't know, 14 seems kind of big, but you know, <laughs> um, so let me, let me try a 12 and a 14, depending on if I want a fat pen or a skinny pen. Uh, then I thought that I wanted a 13. I thought, well, the 14 seems big. So I bought a 13 from, from Chad. Um, and then I kind of made a pen out of one and I'm like, mm, I personally kind of like the bigger bigger pens all right so we got our blank mounted in the chuck now and i think we're, we're only going to be able to do the body you know like turning but it'll give you an idea of what, what's kind of going on with the turning aspects of this and and the work holding aspect of the turning portion of these things I'm still at the point where I really got to kind of think about what I'm doing, you know, with these things. Can't just kind of whip it out and talk and, and have fun. I, I'm, I, I, it does take some concentration to kind of make sure that I'm not messing things up. I don't know what the deal is with those threads though. I don't know what, I mean, I must've done something to it. All right, so we're, we're almost there. Get all these things put away. And so you wanna make sure that you've got um, tailstock support on these things. Um, it just, there's, it's gonna start chattering for sure if you don't have it supported. Uh, and it may just shatter uh, without, without full support. You know, that little mandrel can only do so much. 
So you're just going to use a, a live center point just to make sure that it's it's staying on that on that center, you know. We'll just get this kind of engaged. So knowing that also, this is a big deal. You got to make sure that you've got enough material, you know, left over for you to be able to part out that dimple, to part it off and, and have that dimple. And so uh, I think a good decent rule of thumb for anybody that, that cares, um, a decent rule of thumb is if you, you know, you got it about an eight and a half inch blank, um, you can estimate, and I got these numbers written down. I, I think I know what they are, but I don't want to miss, I don't want to say the wrong things. Um, and I got these actually from, from Jim Hines. So for the blank lengths for each component of the, the pen, for a body, I would estimate about a 3.3.6, and I want to make sure that everybody understands what we're talking about here. Three, you know, decimals, 3.6 inches. Okay, so you'd be using your your calipers, 3.6. Okay, so that's bigger than three and a half, obviously. I don't know exactly what that is, but 3.6 for your body length. For the section, about 1.3 uh, inches, and then your cap. Again, because you want to make sure the the main thing with the cap is you need to make sure that the first drill that you use is gonna clear your nib and section. Um, you may just leave this a little bit long, um, but eventually you'll you'll probably get to the point where you've kind of got things kind of dialed in. Uh, and you, you won't necessarily need to, you know, have a, a lot of extra material on that cap. But to start out, you know, it's not, it's a good one to leave a little bit long. Now I'm going to do, let's see here, 2.6. So I want my body length to be about three and a half inches. somewhere in that neighborhood. So I've, I've got about a quarter inch or like an eighth or so, I guess technically about an eighth inch um, left. So I can just kind of, you know, part that off and I'm, I'm fine. No big deal. All right, so let's get this guy in here. First thing I'm gonna do is just get this thing round because it's a little bit wobbly, kind of see. No, I always do thread relief. Um, we didn't really get into that because that's on the other side when you're doing the, the tenon side. Uh, this is a Beal, call it Chuck. Unfortunately, I think Beal might've gone out of business. So I don't know if you can get these, but you can get them at, uh, Turner's Warehouse might still have some in stock. I really like this one. Uh, if not, then you can get a reasonably decent one is the one from uh, Craft Supplies USA has one. I don't know what brand it is though. All right, so I'm gonna get my dust collector in here, turn that on. So it's gonna be a little bit loud. I apologize for that. I don't like it either, but I don't like dust. You might notice, you might need to kind of keep pushing your, your tail stock up, make sure that that's, con you know, staying engaged. Now I've gotten to the point where I have, I've been kind of playing with dimensions on these and I really like the, the shoulder on this one. So I'm gonna copy that. And it's about, I wanna say it's, it's 
easier for me to do these in millimeters because I already know the, the, the threads are 13. Or I mean, sorry, 14 or so. so we're looking at like 15.8. Let's just go with 16 this time, just to have something a little different. And then I'm gonna taper it down. Now I don't go for trying to make these things postable. Um, it just, it's gonna scratch it up anyway, and I, don't, I just think that you can just put the cap to the side, you know? Real quick, I just wanna, I wanna double check what I had at the end here for this one, because I like the taper. So 14.5 and then 15.8. So we're looking at like about a one, one to one and a half millimeter taper. And I'm going to go 16. Let me write these things down or else I'm going to totally forget. Now again, I'm terrible at tapers. <laughs> so 16 and we're going to go try 14 and a half at the, at the end. But first of all, all I'm trying to do is just get this thing round and running true. And then what we can do is just use a couple different ways. You can just keep, you know, cut, taking passes on it. Or you can just come in with a, a parting tool. An easy way to do this also for tenons is, I don't like doing this because I, I don't have any that I can just uh, wait. Oh, actually, I don't even have a 16. Um, if you're trying to sneak up on a tenon, you can just you can actually sh sharpen these to the point where it'll just go to that that size or just use an end wrench you know to measure i don't even have a 16 anyway so one of these days i want to get some of those it's an easy gauge hey mike's here how's it going buddy all right, so where are we at now? It's probably around, I can't keep numbers and things in my head. I always lose my calipers. Just give me an idea of where, where we need to get to. 19.5, we're going down to 16. is eventually I'll just kind of get to the point where I don't really have to think about this too much. I can do it a lot faster. We're at about 17 millimeters now. close anyway. And then on the other end, I want to get down to fourteen and a half. and a half. 
or so. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Fifteen and a half. I'm getting better at this. Trying to get to the like a certain number. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not that worried about it. Oh, I went a little bit far on that one. It's gonna be a little skinny at the bottom, guys. That's okay. We'll, we'll see what 13 and a half looks like. Jamie Page, what are you doing, brother? Oh, I didn't see the super chat. Was that Jamie? I just saw it. Hey, thanks, Jamie. I appreciate it, man. Hey, man, congratulations on the new lathe. That thing looks like a beast. I'm a big fan of black lathes. We're having some fun making a pen here. I am like head over heels for these fountain pens. So much fun to make. spring cows. I have a couple of those. I'm just not particularly awesome at doing this in the first place. It's getting there. This takes me a while. Get 
getting closer. Alright, I'm going to pull out my uh, my radius square guy. That can sometimes tell me where I've got some kind of weird high spots or low spots. Yeah, so Nikki was asking about my dust collection. Um, I have a an Oneida dust gorilla. So it's like the, I don't know, they probably have, um, I don't know if I can get, I can't really get a shot of it. I, I do have a video if you want to see like the installation. I don't recommend it for, <laughs> it's, it's uh, oh my God, installing it was tough and, um, I, they've got some like portable ones at Oneida though that I think would be fabulous. Oneida has been around forever so they know what they're talking about. People are super helpful there too. Um, another option that I think is pretty good, Chad uses them, is actually the Laguna. Uh, like little, you know, like the, the ones on wheels. They're not a bad dust collector and it's kind of an all, all contained, you know, all in one, like on, on wheels kind of unit. But Oneida has got those as well. Um, so I, I would look at look around at maybe both of those and, and just kind of see uh, if if something might work for your shop. You know, like what's best and what for like the price range. The one thing that's for sure with Oneida is they're highly committed to um, making sure like the filtration system is excellent. And I think the, the Laguna ones are all, all right also, but that was the other thing that was on my list when I was looking for what I got, you know, when I, when I installed this system. And I ended up just kind of saying, well, <clears throat> the duct work alone in my shop, because I wanted a full duct work system, uh, the duct work alone was going to cost as much as well, if I would have gone with the Laguna, the duct, duct work was going to cost more than the dust collector. And I just kind of said at that point, like, I may as well just buy, like, a five horsepower behemoth. Because it's really not going to cost me that much more. Um, and if I ever, for some reason, decided that what I really want to do is like CNC, you know, get like a full-size CNC lathe, or I mean not lathe, a CNC machine and go into some weird offshoot of, you know, stuff that requires a lot more dust collection than I'm, I'm covered. All right, that's looking pretty good, I think. Not exactly like 
the taper that I was really going for. But, whatever. It might actually be postable. <laughs> I went so skinny on the bottom. All right, now another little trick that I learned from Jim Hines is uh, for, for sanding. This is, I only use one, one, uh, one grit and it's 400 of this, but I really like this spongy stuff. It's, it's called Merca Gold Flex. I don't know if this is gonna work. No. Merca Gold Flex Soft. The problem is I had to buy a gigantic box of this stuff but it'll probably last me for the rest of my life. But I just, I find that I don't, um, I don't know, I, I get quicker results with this stuff. And I, I only use it for the initial, you know, like getting the tool marks out stuff. It's a pretty good paper, it cuts really well. There's nothing wrong with Abernet and all that stuff. It's just, it's, I am, he, he did recommend or mention that, that this is what he uses uh, for his 400. And I thought, well, let me try it out. Let's see, what, let's see what all this gold flex is about. And it's pretty good. I like it. Now this is a black blank, so I'm gonna do a lot of making sure that I've gotten all the scratches out because black blanks are a total pain. They're the hardest things to, to get polished up extremely well with no scratches. this light kind of down here, turn it way up. What I'm looking for is radial scratches that go around the blank. And I'm not seeing any, so we're looking good. So, that means we can turn off the dust collector finally. Oh. I like dust collection. I don't like it though, it's so loud. Yeah, the, the Oneida system that I installed is amazing. Um, it really, really works extremely well, but it costs a lot. I, I gotta be honest, the Oneida dust collector was not that, I mean, it was expensive, but uh, you know, it wasn't that expensive. The duct work was absolutely ridiculous. It was bonkers how much I spent on duct. <laughs> It was kind of, it, it, that is the one purchase that I'm still like, Ugh, I really don't know if I needed to do that, but I'm happy with it. Uh, let's see here. 
what happened to Jamie? What's going on here? I'm missing something. Okay. Uh, Jamie, what mic am I using? I can barely hear the dust. Um, I've got the this right now. I use this for the for my live streams. It's the Deity Pocket. It's super cheap and it rocks. And it's the mic. It comes with the transmitter, receiver, and the mic, the lavalier mic. And it's a screw-in style. Like it's a it's a excellent. Uh, unit and I think it was only like 150 bucks maybe if that um, the only thing that I don't like about this is and I can't really get a shot of this but the one problem is if you're going to be using it for different things that might require well if you're going to be using it with like different cameras then on the receipt <coughs> excuse me on the receiver part there's a gain and it's like it looks it literally looks like the bars on your phone except there's like eight of them and they're like super tiny and you can never tell so if you have to adjust that which i would have so i don't i don't use this for my videos because switching that gain was just it was enough to where it wasn't worth using for everything so i actually use the dji mic for videos which i really like that too uh, but I can't get that to work with my computer for some reason. Uh, so I use the Deity Pocket for streaming, and it, it does do a good job of keeping things kind of low. Um, it might also be because of my software that I use. So this is denatured alcohol that I'm just getting the, the dust off of this for, or with, I should say. Make sure I'm clean and good to go here. And then this is water. And we're using the, um, what's this stuff called? The, the, what is it called? Zona paper. I couldn't think of it. Yeah, Deity is a good, it's a good one. Another one to look at is, shoot, is it called Loveland or? Uh, hmm. There's some other brand that makes one similar to this that, that got really good reviews. Like it was a pretty, it was a cheap one and it worked really well. But I, 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 I don't, I can't remember what that one was. I know for a fact this thing works really well. The only issue is you only get one, you know, there's only one transmitter and receiver, which, you know, for a lot of us doesn't, that's fine. Um, I like the DJI um, wireless mic thing. Um, which is the little boxes, you know. I like this quite a bit. It's a lot, it's like at least twice as expensive, I think. But you get two, two uh, transmitters. You get this whole box doohickey that's like a, you know, AirPod charging station. And it connects straight into your phone with like no issues. Like you don't even have to set anything up. Um, so it's a pretty good one. The one downside to the DJI though is you it do, you can't it doesn't have a uh, a way to screw in your lavalier mic if you want like you can just use this and it'll record this thing alone without anything. It's got a speaker and it works excellent. Um, but you got this giant thing hanging on <coughs> excuse me hanging on your shirt which is not awesome so if you want it but it, you could also hook up a lavalier mic but for some reason the connection with this thing is just kind of terrible uh, i i don't know it, it it pops and crackles there's no way to like screw it on to make sure the connection's good and doesn't pop out or anything so that's the biggest drawback to these things and the the price but they're pretty cool they have this little magnet thing that you can use to to just hook onto your shirt you could tuck it under your shirt so put this um put the big brick thing under your shirt basically like this is your shirt and then put the magnet on the outside of your shirt 
uh, to hide it a little bit, but you still got this little square thing, you know. Just depends, but those are great for traveling. And actually that's what we used, um, what Turner's Warehouse used for their demo day when I was down there. And uh, they liked it quite a bit. I guess it worked pretty well. Jabra. I'm not, I'm not familiar. I don't know a whole lot about these things. <laughs> It's, I've, I have like so many different mic systems. Lavalier mics are really the best way to get decent audio in like, especially in like an echoey shop. Um, Cause I have tried like shotgun mics. There is not a shotgun mic on the planet that will actually make the audio sound decent in here. Um, obviously just like your iPhone or camera is terrible. So. I feel like I'm missing a, a genre of microphones. But yeah, lavalier is probably the best way to go. Uh, one of the other nice things about the DJI mics is you can actually, you don't even actually have to transmit to anything. Um, you can literally just, that little puck thing that goes on your shirt, it'll record your audio for you. Or you can use that as a backup recording into the little puck thing as well as transmit it to your camera or you know whatever so it has like you know i want to say that i it costs like 350 or so 300 and it, which is a lot of money but it does a lot of really good stuff uh, and i was kind of thinking like i could easily bring those if i you know am at a at an event um they're easy to just slap on anybody you know and you don't even have to actually have it hooked to a, a, a camera and there's all these like benefits that i was like okay i'm just gonna buy these and i'm happy with it the audio is good uh you you're gonna have to part off the the end of this thing to get rid of that dimple uh that's what i was saying you, you really need to you know make sure that you you your blank has enough room you know, so when you're, when you're, and, and I recommend, eventually I'm going to have to kind of do this, but I recommend, uh, you know, like drawing out what you want to make, like draw out the pen and like how, you know, how long are the, are the, is the cap threads here and the drills that you're going to use and like really kind of lay out everything so you understand what the dimensions are and and know what you need to start with it just it helps to kind of have a little written diagram of everything uh, so that you know everything will fit these things are just you know they're, there's they're not difficult they're just there's a lot more going on with them that you just need to make sure you know everything's good to go with your dimensions and once you've got that then they're really it's just like i said a matter of kind of following a few steps move on to the next thing and you're good to go Uh, yeah, you could part it off before sanding. Um, my thing is, I'd rather have the tailstock support for most of this sanding um, because I'm putting pressure on it. It's up to you. This is just a personal thing, and I don't, I don't know. Uh, you know, for efficiency purposes, I'm sure parting it off is better. But so I'm going to come back, you know, part it off, and then just do a little bit of sanding on that on the bottom there. Just the way that I do it, but you can you could part it off if you wanted. All right, that's looking pretty, pretty snazzy.
Uh, oh, actually, I forgot. Don't want to don't want to get rid of my tailstock support yet. I'm gonna come in with the detailer. I like to come in with the detailer. I think. Well, one thing that I want to try is I want to I want to put the cap. So most of the pins that I've made so far, the cap and the body at the ends have kind of. I mean, it's a little bit domed, but I mean, it's really kind of flat. And I want to try putting round on the body, but flat on the top, and just see what that looks like. Like I said, I'm just kind of feeling my way around, seeing what I like, what I don't like, seeing what works. In, in a month, maybe I'll be parting this thing off before I sand it. I don't know. I don't know. I really do like the shape of that, though. It's looking pretty good. All right. So like I said, detailer here. Well, let's see here. Let me think about this for a minute. Yeah, I'm going to come in with a detailer and just kind of get this thing going with the rounding. I'm going to turn the dust collector back on. measure this because I want it to be about three and a half so let me let me put a mark at three and a half here and actually let me double yeah three and a half yeah three and a half I had a fine silver. That'll do. Definitely gets pretty chattery. see if we can get the chatters. Oh, I know this part can catch. <laughs> it's chattering like a, I don't know, what, what chatters? What 
shatters a lot. Looking pretty good. Yeah, I, I, I understand your no need to sand until it's done, but eventually, it's things are going to kind of change a little bit um, with with how I do these. Um, I'll probably be batching them out. You know, doing like two or three, maybe five pens at a time. And at that point, you know, things things will change with the way that I do the processes. I wouldn't sit here and sand this when I got three others that I need to do, you know, shaping on or something. Probably just do everything all at once for all of them. But I figured we're on a live stream. You guys want to see what this thing looks like, probably. I'm guessing. And I've actually kind of... I've actually kind of migrated a little bit back towards uh, the at least the, the Tripoli buffing wheel. I still like Magic Juice, but... So, I... There... Those middle steps, uh, you know, between like the, the the wet sanding I do with the the papers, the Zona papers, and the Magic Juice, somewhere in there, I leave I can leave scratches. Now, in most cases, it's not really that big of a deal. You can't, you really can't see them. But you know, when you're dealing with certain things like difficult, like black, especially dark blanks and stuff like that, I'm still kind of finding that. If I go up to the gray and then hit it with the bu the Tripoli buffing wheel, I'm finding that I get a little bit I, there's there's really no scratches in it at all. And then I can come back and do polishes. So, it's kind of tough. Uh, I I kind of wanted to get away from it, but like I said, on, on most things, I, it's not really that big of a deal, but on on what I would call more difficult blanks to get polished, uh I kind of need to go back and, and there's, there's something missing in the middle somehow, you know. And I don't know if that's, I'm not sure which part of the process um, would need to be kind of altered. You know, it may be that I need to go a little higher with like the, the before I go to this green. That That could be an issue, like maybe I have to go to 600 instead of just 400. Um, but if I want something to be flawless, generally the buffing wheels still kind of do a little bit better job. But then the buffing, you know, the white diamond is still not as high a polish. So, I'm, you know, maybe if uh, I'm still kind of tweaking things here and there, let's just say. Trying to find the most efficient yet, you know, best way to do it. Yeah, magic juice. I mean, in most cases, that's that's all you need. I do the the green, the the gray, maybe the blue. That's kind of debatable. I don't even know if you need to do that uh, with these papers. And then the magic juice. I mean, it looks, you know, fantastic in most cases. Sometimes, though, on some difficult things, you're kind of like, eh, I can kind of see a little scratch here and there. Triple E wheels generally get those like weird scratches out.
for me. I don't know. It's it's a constant battle. Uh, another thing, listening to that podcast, I mean, these guys are using like, I don't know how many different buffing wheels and sanding steps and like I, it's like they're sanding up to like 2000 or 2500 then they're doing like you know some like six four to six buffing wheels and i'm like oh my god seems like you're kind of i don't know that that seems a little unnecessary but they're also like selling pens like that's their thing so i don't know maybe <laughs> Maybe 37 buffing wheels is the way to get a, a pen polished up perfectly. I don't know. Are you looking at it under like a loop magnifying lens? All right, let me look at this real quick. Um, and I, the other thing is, it, and it does depend, you know, if you're getting really crazy and like, you know, like I said, doing the raking light thing like I'm, I'm about to do, if you're, you know, can't see like me anymore, I'm pulling out the glasses. Yeah, I can. Uh, that's the thing is I can, when I actually get get the gla you know, get some glasses on and stuff. Like, there's some scratches in here still. Going like lengthwise, so that means that I need to do some more with this green. Looks like everywhere too. As you get further, they get rid of bu uh, buffing wheels. Yeah. <laughs> well, efficient and best. The best while being efficient. I th I, they definitely go together. I think. I, I hear what you mean, though. I see what you're saying. Uh, I think what I what I've found with magic juice is it it basically it hides scratches in in many materials extremely well. Like if you really looked at it, like I'm talking like magnifying glass and all this, and got all kind of crazy trying to look at it, you know, close, um, you'd probably see that you know there are some scratches in it, but you can't see them if you just if, even if you're kind of you know paying attention to it, like looking kind of close. A lot of times you really just can't see the scratches in it. Um, but like I said, when you're dealing with like black, it just it shows everything. And especially and it's the thing is, if you can find it looking under like a raking light and kind of giving it a good inspection, if you can see it at this stage, then you're guaranteed to see it. Like they're going to stick out like a sore thumb when you get to like the buffing the polishing the real polishing stages you're going to be like ah oh, there's scratches <laughs> i gotta i need to spend more time on it you know go back and so it is it is good but it, it again it kind of depends on it depends on what's going on what the material is what um you know where's the, what's what's going on with the pen and can you really see anything or not, you know? But I still say Magic Juice is pretty much, that's the most efficient yet, you know, efficiently best method that I've seen so far. Uh, for probably about 90% of things. Biggest thing is, uh, I it's best to just try a few different types of, you know, processes out though. Um, magic juice is an easy one to test because it's like you can just buy the sample set for like I think it's fifteen bucks at Turner's Warehouse, and I mean that's that's a cheap and easy way. There's no setup. You just try the stuff out, and if it doesn't work for you, 
eh, you know, 15 bucks, whatever. Um, to try out buffing wheel setups, that can get kind of expensive, you know. And there's like a setup involved with that on your machine. So if you could find somebody that's got, you know, a buffing wheel setup to, to and, and like, you know, see if they'll let you, you know, just play around with it and try buffing some stuff out like that that's a good one to kind of try out on on somebody else's or you know before you spend the money on more equipment all right that i'm gonna call that quits <laughs> i'm gonna go get some blue paper towels they're softer i think at least i feel like they might be All right, I think, I don't know. I think I might just go for the, the magic juice and see see how well I did with my sanding. Um, we're, the, the nice thing is, worst case scenario, you can always just go back and hit these things with a buffing wheel if, if you see a scratch later on. I still kind of recommend, you know, like if you're, if you're pretty serious, you're, you're making pens and doing stuff, like a buffing wheel setup is, and it doesn't have to be like a super expensive one or anything, but having buffing wheels, I think is not a bad thing to have, especially if you do think you might get out of, you know, if you're not just doing pens, then a lot of times the only way to get your finish done is is with buffing wheels on, on other types of projects. Because Magic Juice, there just really isn't enough of it. Like I wouldn't use this stuff on a bowl. You know. Okay, so let's see here. I'm gonna use my blue paper towels. Let's start with number one. <clears> oh, <throat> uh, yeah, I don't, the thing is, I don't know, it, it, when you really look into it though, with with these with abrasives and i'm not saying you should switch but i just i can't you know most of these things have kind of a grit level and like going up to 2500 and then dropping back down with a polish that's like the equivalent of 2000 i mean you're just wasting steps like again with the efficiency stuff that just doesn't make sense to me and some of these things are like that um, now, the one thing is, though, sometimes some of these different types of abrasives don't really work exactly the same as, like, sandpaper grit. So, you know, there's something to be said about that, too. But, I don't know. I try to kind of, I, I ride the line a little bit with some of these things. That was what, like, like you know, I, I jumped from 400 to, uh, to about 750 with the green Zona. And that might be a little bit much of a jump. Um, that may be a little bit too much. You might, you might actually get kind of better results, consist, consistently better results, um, just going from a, uh, going 400, 600, and then the, the Zona green once again also you're, you're dealing with a different type of abrasive slightly different type of abrasive than like abernet or something so that could be where the breakdown might be whoa yeah i don't know what it is about the the number two and again this is why you don't want to be using a, 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 a like a terry cloth or you know like a fabric to be doing this polishing stuff If that was a towel, I'd be done. My hand would, I'd be going to the doctor right now. Scott, what's up, man? How you doing?
I think I'm going to do that one again because that I don't know what just happened there. Once the towel wrapped up, <laughs> it was kind of I feel like I lost momentum on that polish. All right, we're done with, done with the uh, treacherous number two. All the rest of them don't seem to be like as sticky or I don't know, something. So how's the pole doing? I'm gonna look up at the pole, I can't, what does the pole say? Number one has the most votes which one's number one? Oh, cool all right sorry i had to go get some more towels Oh, well, yeah. Okay, so if you, all you're doing is going straight through 2,500 and then polish, that's, that's one thing. But there's some people, like, they, you know, they jump around. Like, I've seen people that, like, sand up to 2,500, then go to Tripoli, which is probably rated at around 900 or so, you know, and then go through a bunch of buffing wheels and then go back to, like, liquid polish. And I'm just like, what, what are you doing? you're just you're you're polishing it up and then and then cutting it back and then you know you're 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 doing like three times the amount of work just not necessary got to got to follow a, some sort of a progression uh in some cases like i was saying though it it may be um beneficial to you know go from like like maybe like sand up to a thousand and then hit the Tripoli wheel, which may be around 900. You can, you know, I could see that, um, where you're going up above, which realistically, um, yeah, I mean, even I would be going the way, the way that I would normally have done this bef before magic juice, I would have gone to the, the gray paper from Zona, which is like 1350 possibly uh and that those numbers I, I tried to convert it i was looking at like what micron level trying to find like a conversion rate um, based on like micron levels between the the zona paper and like sandpaper uh, which may not really convert exactly but so like 1350 and then back down to like let's say like a 900 i was also trying to find out what like triple e rouge buffing rouge was like about you know micron or grit level uh, and that's highly i'd say that's a, that one's kind of highly speculative because i don't know kind of hard to convert it but you know so that's fine just a little bit but man there's some people that go up to like i like i, I think actually the worst one that i heard was somebody would sand quote unquote sand to four thousand grit and then go to buffing wheels like two or you know two or three buffing wheels and then go to a liquid polish or two and i'm like whoa i just i don't know thing is if if you're getting good results and you like it then i, I don't really you know whatever i don't really care what you do um there's no way i would do it that way though you know All right, step four is done. Let's go get five and six. And initially, when I when I first uh, tried Magic Juice out, I'm like, six steps? Are you crazy? 
That's ridiculous. But, you know. Stone's White Diamond Polishing Paste. I haven't tried that, no. I think it's pretty similar to Magic Juice, isn't it? Heard of it. I haven't really seen anybody uh, using it in the wild. Well, and that's another thing. You, what, 80,000, 80 million grit. I mean, is that even necessary? Because the eye can only perceive like so, you know, so far, uh, like a scratch in, in certain grit levels. I wish that we could find out what, like, what grit, like a lot of these, like, car polishes and, you know, different types of things, uh, buffing rouges and I wish that information was like more widely available like you could see what it is so that you know what you know people throw around eight eighty thousand grit what does that even mean how does that compare to anything all right number six coming up Oh, and actually, I forgot. I usually do the the those other. I'm gonna actually switch. I usually do the what is this stuff? It's like a kind of a microfiberish towel. Once I get to five and six, should be less scratch. No scratch, you know. And that's one thing, if you are applying this stuff, watch out, because, like, paper towels have a grit to them, you know? And I, uh, I don't know for sure, but it seems like those Blue Scott shop towels have way, are, are way less um, abrasive than, like, your just bounty white paper towels. Those are pretty rough. seen the vids and thought it was hype yeah well i i don't know i mean it's I, I don't it's probably very similar to magic juice which yeah i mean that's what i thought i was like oh 37 step polishing juice <laughs> you know because <laughs> and i don't i don't really like a lot of the pastes i don't i find them to be in many cases not um not really solving any problems that i have with my finishing more like adding steps that aren't a lot of times necessary um so you know i i went into it like way skeptical like okay how's this how's this pasty stuff gonna work <laughs> you know? and it worked out okay yeah still a little bit i don't know like i said i on black things i'm still kind of in the the polishing the buffing camp a little bit there might be a little bit of residue on it though right here possibly yeah i would i would take this over to the buffing wheel just give it a little bit of a little bit of love let me uh let's let's get this thing the camera on this side of me really quick I can hold this up and see what I'm doing. But overall, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this 
you know, the, the process of, of doing the tapping and all that stuff. I really enjoyed that process a lot. Um, you know, doing the, the like machining aspects of all this. It's just so much fun. And then, like I said, at the end, I'm taking my blank that I made and, and it's, it is the pen, you know? The blank is the pen and I, I just really love that. So what do you guys think about this new blank look? Might be dropping these sometime soon. Still kind of working out details on the how these all work out. I got to do some testing, but let's uh, let's put the cap part on. I don't know if that's gonna look very good at all or not, but still a little confused about the the threads. On this thing it should be coming soon here we'll get this thing finished up and I'll post some pics of it I like that I like that blank yeah that's it that's about what I found I only found one source of information about the Tripoli um, compound um, and grit level uh, it, it was just so it's so weird that you can't find it's almost like it's proprietary or something and I'm like this is almost to me this is like crucial information like <laughs> if I'm gonna buy your product where's this at and I, I'd like to kind of find out possibly if I can what the um, what the magic juice numbers are I don't know again it may be pr proprietary or something but I don't know it would just be nice to know where it falls compared to some of the other abrasives out there uh, but I'm sure you know, they don't necessarily want to share that information, possibly. Tim finished seven pens today. Sweet. Who's pissed? Oh, Stone's pissed off Mini Makers? Yeah. I don't know. Well, I'm glad you made it, Tim. Uh, by the way, I screwed up. <sighs> I'm really mad at myself. I screwed up and I should have brought your mold home because it was made on, um, I was supposed to bring it home Wednesday night and I didn't. And then I didn't, I wasn't in the shop on Thursday. So unfortunately your, your mold is ready and it's gonna have to go out on Monday. I'm really disappointed in whatever happened to these threads and I'd love to know what actually did happen because it's really weird. I mean, it still works, but hmm. I don't know. Whatever. Let's see here. So dig in the blank. Sweet. Hey, there's Lou. How's it going? Did you, oh, did you, you did see the, the thing earlier? Cool. Yeah, thank you so much for the pen. It's really awesome. For, so for anybody that didn't see, it, it's just joining the fun. Uh, Lou sent a pen. And it, it, you're right, it, it writes really well. Um, let me, let's go for the overhead view. Yeah, check this thing out. He sent this pen out. And so the nib on this one, is I'm not what is, is FPR the brand of nib? I've never heard of that before. I, I'm just getting into this though. Uh, so FPR number six, uh, chrome extra fine nib, uh, and he sent this this uh, n really nice note too and some nice paper. But man, this thing writes like a dream. Woo wee! Um, Yeah, it's really, it's really smooth. I like it. I like it. I'll be using this for the notes for my, uh, uh, for my orders, um, for, for quite a while. So I appreciate that, man. Thank you for sending it. And once I, once I don't have threads that are missing and weird, <laughs> weird things going on with my pens i will send you one too i i promise um i'll have to come up with a fun blank for that maybe i'll do like a kind of a, like a, a special blank too it'll be cool 
I know, Fountain Pen Revolution, I'm telling you, it's pretty cool. Um, and so again, if anybody wants to get into making these fountain pens, Turner's Warehouse has like literally everything possible that you ever could need. Um, and I have a link in the description of this video that goes to the page that has all the you know, all the different types of things. And so they got your taps and dies, they got the mandrels, they have the, um, ch you know, the collet chucks, they have the, the tapping, whatever, I don't even, what do they call that thing? <laughs> Um, I'm going to go and look at what they call that little doohickey. The thing that helps you, uh, uh, you know, with the, I guess, tailstock tap holder, die holder. Um, you know, the thing that I mounted the, the taps and dies in. Uh, the tenon cutter from Jim Hines. I need a drink. Ah, throat was dry. I'm looking at their site right here. Um, they got nibs, they got clips if you want to get in. So, you know, what, what I'm making is just a three piece pen and that's, uh, probably about the simplest design you can do. Uh, but you can get super intricate with these things where you got, you know, like a, a, a clip and, and so that would add another part on the top that you need to do some, you know, threading and all that stuff with, um, you can add like little spacers and put different materials together there's a ton of things that you can do with these things to get customized. Um, I think it's probably smartest in, in my, at least what I'm doing is I just want to focus on get, making sure that I understand and I'm good at the, the, the basic parts, the three parts, then start kind of, you know, fiddling with uh, different things like clips and all that stuff. Uh, but it's pretty fun. So there's links down in the description below. Um, so next week, so I'm going to end the poll. It looks like number one, one. I'm going to go put this pen from Lou over here so it doesn't get resin or dropped or anything mixed in with blanks. So let's see, which one was number one? This one. Oh, almost dropped it. That'll be fun. So, uh, and I'll just pick one of these blanks out of the, the stack. Um, purple, yellow, and green. And so this was the one that had the we made six cups so there's there's purple yellow and green colors in this but we had mica and we also had just dye in resin and so there was six cups and then we before we poured them into the mold we dumped the dye into the mica cup and did kind of like the dirty pour method so we had we only poured three colors technically once we started or three cups let's say um, but both of those colors so and it was like you know yellow dye uh with the 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 yellow uh, mica and then green with green and purple with the purple uh and so that was the way we did that and it's it's pretty interesting I, i'm curious to see because looking at this blank you can see areas where you know it's slightly different um shading which uh, very at the very tip i can actually see green uh dye um, so you're going to get little areas with more depth to it. Uh, and so it's going to be kind of fun. We'll, we'll make that. Um, now I, okay. So actually big, big announcement next Saturday. Um, I have a birthday to go to, not my birthday, but somebody else's. Um, so I can, I can't get out of that. So we're going to probably switch the live stream to Sunday next week. Um, I don't think I need to cancel it, but I'm, I'm going to have to push it back. So we'll probably do the live stream on Sunday. So make sure to keep your eyes peeled for that when I make the decision of where we're going to move it to. Uh, but we'll, we'll, uh, I'll get one of these guys ready. Yeah, I, I'll get one of the blanks ready and uh, we'll turn a, a, a kit pen uh, out of one of those things. I could kind of work on a kit list, like put two of them together, but I think it'd be better just to make a, a regular pen. So let's see here. How do you purchase pens? I'm not sure what's happening. Uh, oh, I see. Okay. For Tim's pens, I think. Tim's pens. Okay. I'm like, wait, what? Oh, you're doing the diamond painting. Nice. You're not as advanced as me. Diamond painting pens, those things are, are pretty tough, especially the turning, because you're only holding, you know, fairly long blanks at the ends. So I don't know. I think it's... Oh, nice. 
the, the uh, was it the Penn Turners Gathering? Penn. Midwest Penn Turners Gathering. Nice. Sweet. Well, welcome. I'm glad that hopefully that was fun. I, I want to hit that one sometime. Uh, did I do a close up of the pen? Yeah, I did a close up. Let's let's do another close up. I mean, I didn't finish the pen. Just the cap. <clears throat> pretty glossy there are some scratches though that are pretty easy to see so I'm probably I'll probably go back to the buffing wheels and just kind of clean things up a little bit I'm digging these these blanks though I think these are gonna be really fun I actually had a, an Asian piece of furniture frankly I don't even know what what the piece of furniture what you would call it but it was like a little stool kind of thing um, this reminds me of I, I don't know what you what it's called um, but it's like a Japanese like arts where they, they make like pictures and it's like these kind of it's black it's like black lacquer with like these kind of crazy colors on it now obviously I'm not making like a peacock or a, you know there's there's no actual picture here but it just reminds me of that it's a piece of furniture that I own that's in storage I haven't seen it forever but it's pretty cool I really like that that design so um uh, and actually what I was going for my inspiration was like like neon lights um, I was I was kind of playing with the idea of, of making something where there's like these kind of thinner wisps but like neon you know like a neon sign or neon lights was kind of my inspiration so I'm not sure what to name it I think what I'm gonna do for you know going forward I, I really want to dive into you know like inspired blanks for for you know kitless or regular pen turning um doing like vertical i want to i want to dive into m many more vertical uh designs and so i think what i'm going to do for naming conventions is to actually probably do like uh i might do this on instagram possibly um but do like you know what what should we name the blank kind of thing so make sure to follow me on instagram down the road when we start doing those <clears throat> Should be kind of fun. Ah, uh, all right, Tony. Well, that's cool. Have fun. A good reason to miss. Yeah, I'll finish this up probably tomorrow. Uh, and I'll send a pic. The thing is, the threads on this body are jacked. I don't know what happened. So I like, it, and I, I, I've already technically i i don't want to sell i don't know initially i was like i'm not selling like the first 50 pens i don't know if i'm going to go that far but i really don't want to sell or do anything with the like i don't want to sell for sure the first like probably 10 20 30 something like that pens i want to make sure that i i'm making good pens that work well <laughs> uh before i like i even think about selling any of these types um, however, I, I may, I may be willing to just send this out <laughs> to give it to you if you want to, if you want to just look at it, but I, I don't know if it's going to work that well because the cap threads are, or the, you know, like the body threads right here, something's wrong with them. I don't know. And I can't really fix those. I don't think. Mo guy. What is that? Mo. Mo. How, do I spell, how did you spell that? M O K I A E. Oh, all it's looking, all it's giving me is Nokia. I'm not finding it. Let's see here. Do those blanks have a thicker end on one end? The blanks? No. Uh, do you mean like this? Is that what you're talking about? This, I, I turned it down, if that's what you mean. 
I don't know. The blank itself doesn't. They were just poured in my Gatling mold. <laughs> yeah, keep it assembled and don't ink it. <laughs> All right, man. That sounds good. We'll get it. Well, okay. So that's assuming that like I don't blow up this. Well, I can I can replace this section if I blow that up, but we'll we'll just have to keep our fingers crossed that the cap turns out okay and everything's all right with it but yeah i'll, I'll definitely let you know um, and I'll, I'll probably share pics of this um, when i get it done somewhere i may wait a little bit because this blank is a little bit kind of top secret right now so you guys are the insiders for for that blank it'll be probably coming soon though i think i really like the look of this and i don't i don't have anything that's even close i've T to be honest, I, I haven't seen a blank that looks anything like this anywhere. So it'll, it should be pretty fun. So Broom Riders here, what's up? You missed it a little bit, but it was a pretty good one and nothing exploded in my face. So that's pretty good. And uh, so uh, just to let you know, we were doing that poll and we're going to be turning one of these blanks on next week's stream. Should be pretty fun. I'm excited. No, no, I I, uh, I turned it down so that we could see um, the comparisons of the different. So, you know, we, we did those experiments the last couple of weeks and I wanted to turn back the samples of, of each one so we could kind of see. Because the problem is these blanks, um, while I think eventually you could kind of get an idea, like knowing what to look for on the outside of a blank, you could get a general idea of what the inside's kind of going to look like, probably, but this looks nothing like, you know, like this. So let me let me just put the right ones together. Uh, it just, you know, you get a lot more detail if you turn them back. And I like to do layers, stepped layers, because a lot of times there's like differences depending on how what the diameter is of a blank. So I, I do that for all the, the blanks all the vertical pour round ones um, on my website just so just so you can see what's what's kind of going on yeah you were lurking nice i like that cool well okay we gotta wrap things up i got a few other little things to do before i go home tonight but it should be uh i'm, I'm pretty excited it should be pretty fun so uh, again thank you to lou for sending that pen i really enjoy it that is so cool uh and then thank you guys all for watching the show and thanks to jamie for, for super chatting and i think that's about it so i will probably be posting some stuff about the the fun in in phoenix uh i'm going to be doing a little bit of a one-on-one -on -one class with chad hopefully i can kind of step up my uh, kitless pen making skills with that um, learn a few ticks, uh, ticks, tips and tricks and uh, and kind of just, you know, get some questions answered and, and kind of just, like I said, step up my game a little bit with this stuff, um, get better at it so I can kind of get to the point where I'm, I'm comfortable, like, you know, with the entire process and, and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, I think that's about it. Yeah, I know. There, you never know what you're going to get in these blanks. It's pretty cool. Uh, that's what I like about them because you never know what's inside <laughs> each one. So anyway, guys, I hope you had a great time tonight. I hope you have a great rest of the weekend. And like I said, um, next Saturday, we there's not going to be a stream on Saturday, but it should, I'm thinking I'll just push it back to Sunday and we'll be good to go. So come back on Sunday. It'll be around 2, 2 o'clock p.m. Pacific time, I think, probably the same time. And it should be pretty fun. So anyway, guys, I will see you on the next stream. And thank you for joining the fun tonight.